Hello and welcome to the Easy Allies podcast. I am your moderator, Brandon Jones. Joining me this week, Ben Moore. Hey. Michael Huber. Yo. My confident co-moderator, Mr. Daniel Bloodworth. Hello. And making this all happen by starting the Zoom call in Slack, Ian Hink. Hi. Ian, I salute you. <laughs> Happy to be a part a good of job. it. Good you job. Did, you did a really good job this time with that. <laughs> Thank I you. Thought. I waited I think exactly till seven. I think you were you were a minute early on my clock, and I oh yeah oh yeah. I want to let you know that stuff <laughs> matters. Uh, let's play. We do corrections first. Why am I jumping into? Wait, what? <laughs> it's your podcast, baby. You can do whatever you want. You can do whatever we you can want. We do it at the same damn time <laughs> if you want. Oh I think we do do corrections first. We're here to discuss some of the biggest headlines in video games this week. But before we do that, we must atone for all of our mistakes in last week's podcast. Ian, please. Begin corrections music. Boop. Sam Lake's iconic Max Payne face was remade for a classic skin in Max Payne 3. Awesome. I don't know if we said that didn't happen, we just weren't sure. Uh, Mafia 1, 2, and 3, even though separate stories, should be played in order as they all feature major spoilers for the previous game if you play them out of order. So too late for that. Uh, I guess a lot of I guess a lot of the like how things wrap up are kind of like hinted at in the beginning of, of each, but uh, having just played Mafia 2, I don't know. Uh, the title of the MLP style fighter is Them's Fighting Herds, not Them Fighting Herds. I don't know if that was specific. I think, uh, Ben, you were the one that brought that up, but, um, uh, Them's Fighting Herds. Get it right, Ben. That one's not really, that one doesn't hurt too much. I'm <laughs> right. I'm fine. <laughs> uh, this one I didn't know, I don't even bother to look it up. RE Engine stands for Reach for the Moon Engine, not Resident Evil Engine, even though people love to call it that. What? And, he, and he's not and real. he's doing that in the head. I looked he it up. Is. He Reach is. for the moon. It's a little hand reaching for the moon. But so what if it's called what like is? the RE engine that makes an RE game is kind of kind of funny. <laughs> I love that setup. Um, Borderlands 3 currently only has two DLCs. The other batches of content are timed events, like those released for Christmas and Halloween. Uh, the De Nuvo anti-cheat, I got a bunch of people bringing this up. We didn't really yeah. talk about it that much, but in Doom Eternal installs a kernel level driver, which basically means it can potentially access your entire PC oh. files without any restrictions. So That's it was, fun. And it okay. has performance yeah. issues. So, you know, there's the oh. performance <laughs> thing, and then oh. there's that whole other thing where Doom Eternal just kind of cracks open your PC and takes a look inside. But the patch uh, is that, live now. It's gone. It's fed. Yeah, that, all of that is fixed. That is so. shitty. I mean, we yeah, didn't. Shit. Yeah, we just that's didn't really, hardcore. just didn't really dive into it. I, I get hot sweats whenever I am about to talk about PC specific tech stuff. And <laughs> uh, blood, you can maybe talk about. You don't need to, but a lot of people <laughs> talked about Tsushima uh, and pitches and syllables and Japanese speech. This goes right. up, that goes down. A lot of people were focusing on the tss in like like tsunami. And my main thing, and this is something, I just feel like I'm the only person who like focuses on this when every people talk about pronunciation. My my main thing was the inflection, and that's always like a big thing whenever people try to produce produce stuff. There's a difference between Tsushima and Tsushima. That was I was saying. What are, what are, of those two options? Of course it is right, Tsushima but I think it's a little, and not yeah. Tsushima. Definitely gotta put the T in there if you can. Tsushima. But, uh, but Tsushima. Yeah, it's, well, I think sometimes the way different people talk, like, you don't hear that as clearly, but, yeah. um, but, yeah, the, the thing, and, and if you go back to my comment, like, you can tell I was a little bit skeptical about, like, what I was saying when I was explaining it, because I was going back to, like, very early stuff before I was even in Japanese class, but, like, we sorted out, like, where my confusion basically came from is, in Japanese, there's not stress on syllables, but there's what they call pitch accent. Which yeah. I think, unless you're like listening to somebody and like trying to copy them and figure it out, it's really hard for an English speaker, speaker to like a, understand the difference. I had an ex-girlfriend who was of Chinese descent and I was trying to learn Mandarin and she would correct things and I like, and I'm like, I'm a singer and stuff and I just could not hear it. Like, she was like, no, it's, it's, it's like this. And I'm like, that's, isn't that what I did? <laughs> like, what is going on? Ben, what were you I, gonna add? I don't think people should be allowed to correct Bloodworth. He's a samurai. He has a I, plaque on his wall and everything. So unless you have that samurai plaque on your wall, you know, you don't get to write that comment. I'm sorry. You just don't get to do it. I was listening to a it's podcast how one works. time. Ian, These and people knew about, way more than I do. I'm, I'm kidding. They talked about Mandarin and they brought in a bunch of people that spoke Mandarin 
on different days, like a week apart, a month apart, six months apart, and said into a microphone, just say these words, and then played all of them right next to each other, and tonally, they were perfect. It was the, it was literally oh, wow. the, it was like they were singing a song. It was the same exact note every single time. It's so that's incredible. A, that's a tricky language there. And yeah. corrections music, please. Thanks. Well, let's play. Me. Let's play gaming gladiators. Uh, I got Ben Moore on the podcast. I got Mike Huber on the podcast, and I got one for each of you. Uh, obviously, I want everybody. I thought to weigh you were in saying that we were we were the gaming gladiators. Yeah, you were the two. Oh. Ben Moore versus Michael <laughs> oh, Huber. Okay. Ian, hey, right, what do cool. you think? Uh, uh, so. <laughs> Once we get Don't back into the studio, once we are allowed to go outside more and work in our offices and such, I'm going to start a gladiators arena for video game characters where they are going to battle to the death, but it's fine because obviously all video game characters come back from the death at some point. But I definitely do want these to be bloodthirsty matches. I just need to know everybody's bets before we actually get into this. So Ben, I want you to lead the discussion on Teddy from Persona 4 versus Morgana from Persona 5 from Javin Mather. <laughs> Who do we okay. think? Who's coming out on top? So, I think I think Morgana is is smarter, right? Morgana's kind of leading the thieves. Uh, could probably craft some tools. Uh, but Teddy has been in both Persona 4 Arena and Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. Yeah. You know, he's been really grinding out the hours in the lab. <laughs> so I think in terms of like raw martial prowess. <laughs> It might be Teddy. Teddy always had, like, there was always some kind of, like, dark undercurrent to Teddy. I was always like, there's something freaky about Teddy's, this guy. Teddy's like, the circle, you, right? Teddy's the, yeah. right. Teddy's the big guy. Shadow I, I, Teddy. I think mentally I'm being skewed by, like, just going to PAX and having Teddy, like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. he doesn't look very mobile. But Morgana can just turn into a bus and run him over. Very true. He just turns into, like, a boy. <laughs> well, Morgana, Persona 5 Royal, Ooh. there's human Morgana as well. So. Really? There's a tease. Yeah. There's a tease. Uh, I'm all about spoiling stuff. In they this showed segment. it in the trailer. Okay. Huber, what, <laughs> Huber, what's your bet? Damn. We did spoil Damn it. Uh, I, think, I think Ben's spot on here. I think uh, grinding out those arena matches in the dojo, martial prowess. Well, <laughs> gives the edge to, to Teddy there. Huber, this might be difficult to think about and probably difficult to watch, but I need your take on Samuel Smith's picks. Chris Redfield versus Leon S. Kennedy. Oh, boy. Oh, dude, Leon S. Kennedy. Oh, wow. Really? That, that quickly? Really? Huh? Yep. But the yep. guns. The take guns. Out, and I'm not talking guns. about pistols, baby. <laughs> no, about... Leon S. Kennedy. Uh, Leon just has more of an wow. espionage vibe. You know, oh, he's cooler, Chris is sure. a soldier, brute force, mm. obviously mm. breaking boulders. Uh, but I think the the espionage factor and just like the cool factor, I think that's gonna push Leon the cool. a little over the edge, the a little, cool. little more confidence. Uh, yeah. It must have been the coolness that took him out on that one, Jim. <laughs> He's just so cool. <laughs> He's just too. Grant Chris is in the locker room after, like, he's just too cool. I was like, yeah, I yeah, one of the movies, the newest movie, they team up, and there's this part on like a freeway where Leon is like. Doing the craziest shit with a motorcycle, like it's just bayonetta at this point. Does Chris it's, backflip? Have we ever have we ever had any Redfield backflips? I think it's only Leon that does. Good that. question. Good question. I don't know. Anybody disagree? Anybody taking Chris on this one? It's so funny. I'm so disconnected from the Resident Evil movies. I had no idea they had any canon characters in them. There's a lot going on. Yeah, the, the oh, yeah. Animated, animated ones are ones. canon. Yeah. The first CG one was uh, either uh, Jill or was one of the leads. Yeah. Uh, Nice, thank you. Okay, good. Lock it in. Huber, I'm so stoked that I got you here because you know what we're about to talk about. You know what I'm going to lead this podcast with. Do you know? Have you seen them? And NPDs. NPDs. Yes. Oh. <laughs> and Huber, uh, I hope you're sitting down. I know. This is April. This is high stakes. A tweet from Matt Piscatella. Okay. I've been working with video game sales data for over 15 years, and April <laughs> is by far... The wildest month I think I have ever seen. Whoa. This April specifically. This yeah, yeah. April of 2020. Okay. Are you ready? I'm not ready. April 2020 tracked spending across video game hardware, software, accessories, and game cards totaled $1.5 billion. 
73% higher when compared to a year ago. This is a new record high in reported spending for an April month, eclipsing the $1.2 billion generated in April of 2008. Wow. wow. Best ever. Take <laughs> you know, my friend... Um, you know, it's funny. Uh, Damiani just mentioned that Xbox controllers were sold out right now. Mm -hmm. And then my friend, all month long has been trying to get a hold of a switch yeah, and I just can't. I hear switches yeah. are tough. Yeah. Which I'm a little yes. disappointed. I'm a little disappointed there cuz I thought you were about to accidentally just introduce Damiani as my friend Damiani. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, like, we know who Damiani my, is. My friend Damiani. <laughs> my friend Damiani. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, Huber, it's funny that you mentioned the Nintendo Switch. Year to date hmm. dollar sales, year to date of the Nintendo Switch are the highest of any hardware platform in United States history. Whoa. Year to date. So by this all time, time, any other year, no one else has done as The well. previous high was set by the Nintendo Wii in the year to date period ending in April 2009. So 2008, oh. 2009, big years. <laughs> this is the Switch, Switch baby. <laughs> this is just, yeah. I mean, it, obviously, it, you know, you have Microsoft and Sony. Obviously, Sony is, is are the big dogs, but just this is the time. This is their, this is their moment. And um, crossing. Animal Crossing. Yeah, we'll get to yeah, Animal, Animal Crossing. Crossing. Um, dollar sales tracked in video game software increased 55% in April compared to a year ago to $662 million. This is a new record high for an April month. So not just all the game cards and consoles and everything. This is just gaming software. The previous record of $642 million was set also in April 2008. Hardware spending in April 2020 grew 163% when compared to a year ago, up to 420 million. This is the highest total for an April month since the 427 total achieved in April 2008. Year to date wow. spending reached 1.2 billion. Hardware spending, 1.2 bill, a 30% increase when compared to a year ago. So we'll get into, you know, top selling games of April and then the year to date sellers are fun, but yeehaw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is April well, always big? I mean, There's Switch another no 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 no. This is all like is unprecedented. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I singled out the Switch there, but it just it seems like everybody wins. You know, it seems like games as a service are winning because because game cards were included and all that. Uh, he yeah, he said and, Switch and, does not reach this milestone in normal market conditions, and the PS4 and Xbox also saw sharp boosts in April. Um, this level of growth, uh, Piscatella noted, is unprecedented unprecedented at this late stage in the console cycle. Yeah. Absolutely unheard of, he emphasized. Hmm. Makes sense. It it does. I mean, why does, you know, I think we, it's easy to say, but, you know, are there any thoughts beyond we're all stuck at home <laughs> for why it would <laughs> make sense? It's a big factor, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's entirely the factor. And, you know, he's really is, he's really interested to see what the long-term effect of this is, whether it will be, you know, like the with the blue ocean or whatever of the Wii, right? Where like all these people bought into the Wii and then just kind of, you know, fell off afterwards or mm -hmm. whether this will open up, you know, the gates for like a whole new group of console players to keep playing afterward. Yeah, it's interesting too, because there's been the updated consoles as well. So it hasn't been this like, hey, consoles came out seven years ago, but now all of a sudden we're, you know, selling a ton. It's like, there's been this constant trickle of, you know, the Nintendo Switch launches and PS Pro and Xbox S and X. So I wonder if that's contributed to kind of the steady, steady as she goes. Yeah, the Switch Lite as well. I wonder if any people have felt a reason to, to do that jump, you know, during this time period or, uh, you know, obviously Switches in general are hard to get, but uh, I'm curious to see comparisons between those two. Um, is this, I mean, obviously this is just good news. This makes me happy. Is this something that we can expect to happen more this year? Are we going to have, is June going to be even better? Is July going to be even better? Big releases coming out this summer, lots of fun news. Yeah. I mean, you would or, assume, or, right? Or is I the shocker that April this new consoles this. coming? I think they'll probably level off a little bit more. Um, I think April was probably the spike at this point. We may still see a pretty high May, but like as, you know, like a lot of this I think is just driven by like, people don't have anything else to do. You know, and right. so I think as people start going back to work and start being able to do, you know, beaches and hiking trails and all this stuff more, yeah, we'll we'll see less in terms of sales, <laughs> and and especially with the shortages, right? Like, if there's no hardware to buy, you can't buy hardware. Right. Yeah. 
Um, I'm really curious. I agree with Bloodworth. I'm really curious to see what if if like Last of Us Two and Tsushima back to back will have an impact on PS4 sales, or if that's appealing to people who already have a PS4, or just I'm just curious to know what the numbers are going to be like for that. As well. Yeah, I was definitely thinking like some people buying PS4 Pros in April or May probably gearing up for last of us like gotta be gotta be a percentage right like yeah yeah i was I wondering have, i have a lot of friends who uh like multiple friends who have purchased a console sold it off once they played the game they wanted to play <laughs> wow. and then purchased it again later like yeah. a wow. friend of mine bought a switch for breath of the wild beat it sold it bought another one later and I'm just like, this is a strange what? practice to me, but okay. <laughs> like, I, I know several people who do that. It's a so, high-priced uh, rental there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get ahead of you, Brandon. Are you getting into uh, titles as well? Uh, sure. Yeah, I think just the major thing for me with Last of Us and Tsushima is they're both, like, very graphic games. Like, they're both, you know, I think if something mm -hmm. like a Spider-Man is probably much more of a system seller. Right. Um, yeah, because yeah, they did talk about this as being a way to, to, like, connect with people. You know, like, with Animal Crossing, like... Connecting with your family and stuff virtually. Yeah. Yeah. I love uh, uh, our good dear friend Brent Phillips reached out to me and was like, how much swearing's in Final Fantasy VII Remake? And I'm like, uh, not not a lot. And he was like, nah. He's like, if I get to play it in front of the kids, I'll play so much more of it. <laughs> He's like, yeah. so I just want to know. I'm like, <laughs> sure. it's not going to warp their minds. It's fine. I, I would um, say there was more than I expected. De more than, yeah. M more they in that span of time. They word a lot uh, in that no. game. <laughs> Shoot, man. And when it Shoot. hits, it's like, <laughs> mm. uh, Some of the language actually in 7 Remake, I was like, whoa, couldn't actually, you know, some of the, some of the phrasing and, and stuff. Like, uh, it's the times have a change in the last 20 years. Uh, Blood, did you want to bring up anything specific before? Yes, we get into the, uh, the April 2020 top 20 best-selling games. Yeah, I mean, go, go through the list because, yeah, it's some of the stories in that list that are, like, pretty fascinating as well. I'm counting on y'all. What was the best-selling game of April? You know what it is. Animal, Animal Crossing. Crossing. It's got to be Animal Crossing. Yeah, it's got to be Animal Crossing. Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, come on. Oh, oh of come April. Of yeah. April. Wait, that was what we were talking about this whole time, man. Should have been Animal Crossing. Was Animal... Oh, I, I mean, that They're makes sense. They're it could have been if it was... Uh, they don't have Nintendo's digital sales. Right. I, oh. yeah, sure. So yeah. potentially it could have been. I um, guarantee but, it was yeah. Animal Crossing. <laughs> That uh, Final Fantasy, yeah. Remake, not only best selling of the month, best selling Final Fantasy. Period. Ever. In the l launch period. Currently huh. the best selling PS4 game of 2020. Sets a new launch month Final Fantasy franchise sales record in both unit and dollar sales. Both records were previously held by. 13? Final nope. Fantasy 7? Nope. Oh. 15, which launched in 15. December of 2016. Wow, really? Yeah, so you know, that, it, that series it, is doing good. <laughs> it's almost yeah, like. They always it's almost like Final Fantasy fans wanted a Final Fantasy VII remake for like a decade and just weren't <laughs> listened to for a really long time. It's amazing that it came out and it did really well. That's, that's but do really you, weird. Well, you bring up a good point, Ben. It's like how much how much stock is there in the waiting? You know what I mean? Like how yeah. like like do you want to make people wait until they're just frothing and then you drop it and that's when you absolutely eclipse every expectation. Weren't they, like, frothing on day one, though? This is, like, post-froth. Yeah, They're at least sure. frothing at that, that, was it, PS3 demo? Yeah, the oh tech demo. Oh, my God, yeah. yeah. And this then when Sony, they I'm... faked us out during that, that press conference, <laughs> when they were like, here's Final Fantasy VII, the old one. <laughs> oh, that yeah. moment was oh. such a troll. The I was yeah. there was for that in person. Yeah, I remember, like, yeah. that, was, that was it. Like, greenlit it. That was it, um... Yeah, that was it. Well, what's that? What was that event called? The Forgot memes, <laughs> the memes of yes, him laughing know, are so good. Uh, <laughs> coming in at number two, Resident Evil Three. Again, not the not the title you think, although obviously it makes sense. Call of Duty: Modern Warfare, killing it. Oh wow! Well. Um, right and left, Animal Crossing coming in at number three, the best-selling title on Switch for the twelve-month period ending April twenty twenty. I'd be really curious about New Horizons digital sales, and it's yeah. a bummer oh. that we don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we had the mm -hmm. Nintendo report not that long ago, so yeah, I I don't remember the number off the top of my head, but it w it was in there. Like that's actually the one nice thing that about like those Nintendo financial reports, is like you get very clear numbers, um, but they only come out you know, a couple times a year, so you don't get that monthly tracking like NPD has. Oh yeah. 
But I mean, like, the digital sales for Animal Crossing have to have been huge, right? I would assume, I guess maybe yeah. this is wrong, my assumption was that they would sell more digital copies than physical because no one can go anywhere. <laughs> right. But Although it did launch just before, you know, like, like just on the cusp before yeah. stay at home, like the, you know, yeah. we were, we were yeah. well into the pandemic by that point, but it was before everyone was kind of locked down, at least in, in, in California. Yeah. I'm really curious to see how Origami King does as well. I imagine that might be a game where reviews have a pretty significant impact on interest. Yeah. Yeah. People seem nervous about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. rightfully yeah. so. Rightfully so. Couple. Yeah. But. I thought it looked great. <laughs> uh, I got three sports games in this top ten. Resident Evil 3. Yeah, where's Resident Evil? <laughs> it's not number Resident four. Resident Evil 3 football. <sighs> number, four is, number four is one of these sports games. I don't know Nemesis throws down. <laughs> uh, MLB The Show. It will be The Show at number eight. Nice. Uh, so, Madden, yeah, one game maybe? behind it, but... Uh, Madden, yeah, NBA Madden, 2K. Madden's number nine. Yeah, NBA 2K20, number yeah. four. Uh, uh, and then... Um, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Huber. Resident Evil Three at number six, only Ouch. beat out by GTA Five. Bah, 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 bah. Uh, oh <laughs> GTA is back. <laughs> absurd. It is absurd. It's so it's, absurd. It's up Resident Evil's like launch eight. month, GTA Five. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Oh, it wasn't launch month for Resident Evil. This is the second month. Yeah, it's April, right? Um, no, it's in March. Silly me. Are you three? I thought I mean, was in February. Was no, it? No, it's April, dude. I don't really blame you. The three month yeah, period <laughs> existing between March, April, and May has felt about two weeks. So time, yeah. yeah, time is a blur. Time is a flat. Yep. Resident Evil was in fourth place last month. I, I, yeah, but I can't remember if it was February or March, honestly. <laughs> it, ca it came oh out on gosh. April third. Resident Evil three. I yeah, was playing dude, Resident thought. Evil three remake on the three sixty. Like that April third. You're freaking me out, Bloodworth. You're making me. But they have it Making listed as fourth reality. place the month before. What the heck? What's going on here? Pre-sales? I don't know. According to the internet, it says April 3rd initially. That's what I thought. But these are these just Resident Evil sales in general, dude. I don't. I'm curious actually what their where their expectations were and what uh, mm -hmm. the uh, just performance has been of that online game, which name is totally escaping Resistance. Right Resistance. Yeah. Um. R e r e. Uh. I have no I mean, explanation. We need to ask this Catello. <laughs> Resident Evil's doing pretty good, Huber, right? Absolutely. Uh, there pretty was some place. pushback. There was some pushback from the fans for three, a little bit, you know, and and comparing it to two and and kind of the scope of the the remake, but crushing it. Yeah. Can I'm, I? Yeah. I'm not gonna hold games and those two games in the same regard. Like they're definitely two different experiences. But uh, mm -hmm. I loved three. I yeah, loved dude. three. Love three. Ben. Uh, I just want to share a really quick, cute story. Uh, sometimes I talk about video games with my wife a lot, and sometimes she doesn't always pick up. Uh, like Sometimes I say things assuming that she should know them, but she's not invested in video games, so of course she doesn't. And I was saying RE in, for Resident Evil a bunch, and I'd be like, oh, RE1 or RE2, and I'd just be like talking about something, and she'd just nod her head. And, she, and one day she just goes, oh, Resident Evil. I thought you were talking about a human being named Ari, A-R-I. Uh, yeah. And I just had no idea what you were saying. That's so good. How many of this guy are there? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, too. Yeah. That's funny. Schiz schizophrenic, you know? It's like, yeah. this is a lot of different... Well, Ari 6, he was real right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ari 4, though. Mm. Ari 4, great guy. So in the top 10, I got one game missing. We got uh, GTA 5 and Ari 3, just nice and snug. Mario there. Kart 8. Uh, five FIFA, and six. FIFA, FIFA. Bing. MLB at 8, Madden at 9. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, and, and uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 at number 10. That number 7 slot, though. Really? Uh, FIFA. I'm curious, any of no? The only three sports games in top 10 are NBA, MLB, and Madden. So not uh, Mario five Kart? Royal. FIFA's, FIFA's at 12, not Mario Kart. Oh. Streets of Rage 4 came out like the last day, so there's no way on that. No. Mario Kart Mar is at 16. Streets of Rage 4, oh, not at the 20. not in the top 20. Blood's what straight cheating right now. Blood is not playing this game. I've right had now. the thing, yeah, no, I've had the thing up the whole time. I was just right. looking at it before the podcast. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> so, so I had to be quiet. Sniffing. I'm happy that Huber didn't check, though. When he posted it, I was like, no, I kind of don't want Huber to check this. Um, Mario, oh. wait, did you say Mario Kart? Yeah. That's at Call 16. Of, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Remastered. Wow. 
Okay. Number seven, the number seven best-selling game of the month following its release on the Xbox One platform. Three Call of Duty franchise titles finished among the top ten best-selling games of April on Xbox One. Wow. Call of Duty is just going to be popular forever. Forever. It's just crazy. Yeah, Ben, I'm new to this mod or anything, i got to be honest. Is it just... It, should we talk about Call of Duty at all? <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things right. where you'd be like, discuss. You right, know? <laughs> like, what, what else is there to say at this yeah. point? I, you know. I'm actually in the, the minority with Warzone, you know? Like, when Warzone came out, everyone flocked to it, and it's massive. It's so mm-hmm. huge, and it's amazing. I love it. But I I loved the Modern Warfare just the the normal multiplayer so much. I feel like Warzone just like stole all that thunder. But that's just my perception. It's still there. I can go play it. Yeah. But like gotta, the, the, it definitely stole the hype, you know, because everyone's like talking about Warzone. No one's really talking about the the traditional it's multiplayer. Second fiddle now. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I I'm curious to see how that goes like just hypothetically if they keep adding a battle royale to call of duty like that's gonna that's diminishing returns right like that's not constantly gonna be exciting maybe they do something crazy with it could be wrong but i i wonder if kind of this like mindshare thing that you're talking about if it will swing back toward a more traditional multiplayer at some point totally yeah, know. so there's an interesting uh, Piscatella quote here. Uh, he said, We've seen strong catalog performance from Call of Duty franchise games for years, however, not at this scale. The data suggests to me that efforts such as Call of Duty Warzone and Call of Duty Mobile have contributed to the success of the console games. Warzone Multiple free to franchise play. entry yeah. points and touch points appear to have done a fantastic job of making the Call of Duty franchise even bigger. Soon you'll be able to play it on your fridge, man. <laughs> Call of Duty fridges. Free. Somebody's got that set up. Custom fridges. I'm looking at 10, 11 to 20. One thing particularly stands out. Uh, number 11, Just Dance 2020. Number 12, there's FIFA at 20. Number 13, Mortal Kombat 11, which is on, on par kind of with your expectations. Mortal Kombat always does well. And the yeah, DLC Mortal, has been I mean, received Mortal, well. And Mortal Kombat does really, really well. Um, dipping into Aftermath a little bit, it's really fun. And I think... It'll be interesting to see where it is on the MPDs for this month because they have like aftermath bundles where you right. can get, you know, the combat pack and aftermath and MK11 all in one. So I, I imagine it will be on this again. Uh, a lot of the cutscenes I've seen from aftermath look fantastic. <laughs> like there's just okay. a lot of story that they tacked on. Can I just can I just spoil one little Please. minor fight yes. thing? Yes. Spoil. Yes. Okay. It's, this spoil is gonna, this is going to be a spoiler for Aftermath. It's just one sick moment that happens early on in the story. So, Fujin and Nightwolf and Shang Tsung are hanging out together, and they, they get into this fight, <laughs> and Nightwolf just stretches his arms out like this. Right, he's got both of his hatchets. And Fujin just blasts wind at him, and he just starts spinning around, and he just starts cutting everybody up like it's a blender, <laughs> and it's amazing. And it's so like, awesome. okay, you guys just had fun with this. Like, people got in a room, and they were like, how can we combine these ridiculous characters to get there? His, his tomahawks, not hatchets. But. So it's like 40 bucks, and that like stings so hard, but at the same time, Ben, I'm like, wow, they're adding so much stuff in this. It's like so justified. The production values just seem, it almost feels like a, like, obviously nowhere near as expansive as an Iceborne, but like that yeah. level of production for an add-on. I mean, I think, I think the extra story is like really selling it, where... yeah. yeah. Uh, just the production values in that story, as you said, are fantastic. But you also get three characters all at once. Oh. And then, just because of the way Mortal Kombat 11 is set up, it's like, well, you've got towers for each of those characters, and you've got like a bunch of unlockables that you can collect. So, I, I don't know. I think it's, it's nice. Um, Friendships. Friendships, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's totally. worth 30 bucks right there, friendships. Seriously. <laughs> Have you seen some of the friendships? I know. No, I oh, oh, maybe like, yeah. like oh, I've seen like few. one or two. I've seen like one or two, but like they're, I'm kind of I'm kind of like saving them, you know. They're mm. they're very funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I haven't I, seen all of them, but the the Evo snub was like the only negative negativity I I recall from this year regarding MK. Um, and now it's like back in or whatever, kind of right. Uh, they're di- yeah, it's it's separate from like the main separate oh, from oh, the main okay. group. Um. Uh, number 14, Borderlands 3, which is the uh, Borderlands series coming to Switch. Not, yes, with Borderlands 3, or is it just the... No, not 3. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, 
Borderlands as a franchise doing well. Number 15 is the thing that I want to talk about. Number 15, Michael Huber. Predator Hunting Grounds. Oh. Wow. Good for them. Wow. No threat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just, oh I just kind of want to explore potentially what it contributed to this. Obviously, the Schwarzenegger poll was probably pretty strong. I think that might have. Poll. I think that it had really good. It had really good marketing. It had a. It had the demo that came out. Like, yeah, just the vibe, just the idea, Jones. Um, I think just everything about this, like we're hungry for that idea. Uh, it was like for, when, wasn't announced until May twelfth, though. They've had right. a lot of really good streamer, uh, yeah, like, interfacing too. I, I've seen a lot of enthusiasm about streaming it, uh, mm -hmm. and a, a lot of enthusiasm despite it. It kind of seems to have nothing to do with whether the game's good or not. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Like Jones with it's with so Friday the Thirteenth, like no matter what. You're, I'm just in. You're in, you know? And, like, I think Predator kind of is one of those franchises that has that right. pull of, but like, you're in. I'm not seeing <laughs> Friday the 13th. I mean, obviously, this month is, is a separate thing, but, like, I don't think Friday the 13th was number 15. You know, obviously, the circumstances mm -hmm. are different, kind of all, yeah. you know, the all the boats are rising right now. But what is it? Is Predator I think just a different thing than, than yeah? Than Friday Friday, the obviously, is it just the clout? Is it just kind of the the physicality and the mm -hmm. the shooting? It's just more much more of an easy jump in game, whereas like stealth doesn't necessarily sell as well um, than just yeah. And like then I think Ian nailed it too with streaming. Like that's such a good avenue to sell that game. You get some big names. You know, I, I feel like you could show that game off in bursts. And, and kind of sell it that way, and that's kind of like the streaming style, too. You have a streamer play it for like an hour, um, set the tone, you know? So, you're... you're pr oh, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, like, going going back to what we originally touched on with this discussion is, like, quarantine as well. Um, I think a lot of people are just bored and want to hang out with friends. And, mm -hmm. like, what better yeah. way to hang out with friends... Than to like voice chat and be hunted by a no threat predator, you know. That's, that's so <laughs> true. Man. Yeah, Ben, because my my friend, my friend's dad is a predator fanatic, and he got the game just to like show his dad, like, hey, predator, you can be a predator. Yeah. So I think there's just a lot of stories like that. Yeah. yeah. Predator is cool at any age. Yes. Yes. It's good. To, it's good to know. I think too, Sony coming in and, and really backing it up. Um, mm. Good yeah. marketing, good call, yeah. Bloodworth. On uh, PlayStation Blog, for the longest time, they had a huge play, uh, Predator Hunting Grounds uh, banner, and of course the demo and the, or the beta or whatever. So. Little, uh, little tease. Uh, patrons of Easy Allies might see a little different kind of Predator. Not in a bad way. A different version of the Predator. <laughs> oh, Next, we're trying some new things. Oh, no. you know? Not in a bad way. way. <laughs> not a bad, not a the Predator. <laughs> Next week. Easy allies. <laughs> we're we're to catch predators. a Predator. <laughs> I botched that tease, but exciting stuff next week. Check it out. It's very exciting. Very exciting. Okay. Not in a bad way. Get your mind out of the gutter. Very exciting. Yeah. 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 Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> There, you're Mario Kart 8 making itself known <laughs> at number 16. A good transition out of that. Yeah, bail me out, Jones. Uh, Mario Kart! Um, <laughs> pull up, pull Star up! Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order at 17, which is another thing that I feel, you know, attitudes are high. You know, I think, um, uh, yeah, it's good to see that doing well. 18. For sure, it just had a patch. I don't know if that impacted that at all. They added, like, an don't arena know. mode and, and that. Give me the story DLC, man. Yeah. Sure. Give it to Seriously. Me. That's what it'll take for me. But then again, the control got that, and I have not made time for it. Uh, Persona <laughs> make 5... time. Don't skip it. Make time before the next one comes out. It's pretty Be cool. there. It's pretty Be cool. there. Uh, Persona 5 Royal at 18, Ben. Really? Yeah. Top 20, baby. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clap for that. Yeah. I'm going to clap for that. <laughs> That's Again, everybody everybody wins. It's just yeah. April felt like the month where everybody wins. Need for we Speed twin. Heat at 19 and Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. At number twenty, that's uh, a win for anime. Anime, dude. <laughs> I mean, it's there win. we go. The power I'm trying to remember. Anime. Does Kakarot have multiplayer at all? I don't think so. No, doesn't okay. even matter. No, no. no. <laughs> what I'm just thinking because there's like only like four matter. games or so on here that don't have multiplayer. 
<laughs> That's the power yeah. of anime, baby. Yeah. I'll tell you the power of anime. I feel that. I've been craving multiplayer so much. I can just I just want to say I can relate to that so so much playing with friends right now is is awesome. I wonder th- this is what I want data for. I wonder the percentage of people that bought Kakarot where when they were contemplating the purchase, this is all that went through their mind. They're like I like Dragon Ball. Click. And that was it. <laughs> that was the whole <laughs> purchasing decision. Oh, Dragon Ball's cool. Yeah, I like, that's I like how Dragon it goes. Yeah. 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 And, and how long until that like resets, you know? Is it 10 right. months, 14 yeah. months, 16 months before you like yeah. it fills up to the top and then you're just like, ah, oh, Dragon Ball. Oh, look at that, Dragon Ball video game. Like, yeah. 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 Bandai Namco knows. I like Dragon Ball. Wait, yeah, they know. wait. They got, I need to, they I got need that to know what the end of the Brandon Jones... Wait, I'm oh, sorry, what? Tell you about the power of anime sentence was going to be. I know, I know some things. <laughs> uh, anime is so gosh darn powerful. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot... Uh, is currently at number five for year to date, 2020 top 20 sellers. So wow. even though January at the bottom of our one to 20, uh, beating beating our, our my precious GTA 5, Huber's precious RE3, um, Blood's precious Mario Kart. I don't know, maybe probably Damiani. Um, but uh, <laughs> January releases, dude. That is continues to be such a good month to release a video game. But uh, COD, Modern Warfare, Animal Crossing, and Final Fantasy VII still clutching the top three. Animal Crossing and Final Fantasy swapping because Animal Crossing was just out longer, sold more. Uh, NBA and Madden both in that top ten. Uh, NBA still at four. Oh, and MLB as well, so got to have at least three sports titles. How many sports yeah. titles? MLB was, the next it came MPD out at such a good 10? time. It came out at such a good time, just Jones, because like baseball was mm-hmm. two weeks away from finally coming back, and then yeah. obviously with everything. I see people streaming one. it, and they post like clips on social media, and then like I'll be scrolling through Twitter, and I'll see a baseball game, and I'm like, wait, what? Oh, right. <laughs> oh, right. it's the game. Oh, jeez. <laughs> like, okay, that's a, ah, so we're playing a video game. Sorry. Sometimes yeah, uh, racing has really like been going pretty heavy on like a lot of the simulators and stuff too. Like the actual drivers have been competing. Oh, we'll get to that blood. Oh, funny. Do you know about fun events that happened in that world <laughs> this week? Uh, I'm we'll get not to... sure what you're referencing. There's a but... tease. Well, I'll tell you later. There's a tease. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to cover it extensively, but I'll, I'll talk about it okay. before we finish up with headlines. Um, this is a headline that's neat. You know what's really been neat as moderator is, I'm telling you, it's neat. Okay? <laughs> uh, what's been fun is just kind of looking at the week at a glance. And it's that sometimes things happen like NPDs or, you know, like Tsushima or something where it's like, okay, this is clearly what we need to talk about. And then I'll just look at everything and try to figure out, like, what really floats to the surface um, in terms of stuff that I think would make an interesting discussion. I got Ben Moore here, so I think it's cozy just in general talking about Samurai Showdown. But <laughs> there's so many things about Samurai Showdown Neo Geo Collection uh, that are worth talking about. I have... A, a giant paragraph that I'm very much looking forward to reading. Um, a very fascinating story behind this game, just kind of how it came to be. Uh, but Ben, Samurai Showdown, why, why, why hype? Why happy? Where are we at with this with this franchise right now? Um, I mean, I think, like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have like a long history with Samurai Showdown, other than, you know, enjoying Samurai Showdown Two when I got to play it as a kid, uh, which was not very often. But I think just this whole SNK thing where like in general i think people are pretty happy with samurai show i think they have some complaints with like playing matches online but i think in general you know most people are pretty happy with that and i think people just to sum this all up people just want to see snk do well snk has a lot of sick properties and they're really out there going for it and i think they're putting their best foot forward as much as they can and i think i think people just want them to succeed um, and so I think, you know, Samurai Shodan is obviously key in part of that. And so I want, I want them to do well. I think people want them to do well. We just want feel good SNK announcements. And this, the way that where this franchise is at, I've seen a, a other franchises do in this past gen and, and before that, but really in this gen, where you get an interesting new sequel or a remaster or something that kind of everybody gets focused on, and then you do a collection, you know, so people yeah. can catch up and check out other things. And then that always makes me really fascinated for what's the next thing they're going to do. It's like now that everyone has a chance to to learn more about the series, and now that this is you know getting better sales, it's just kind of more in the in the in uh, just the public mind. You know, it's like, what then are they going to do with that? How much, how well did that sell? How well did that inform them on how many people are still interested in Showdown? Um, are, how, how interested are the other panelists in Showdown? Um, truthfully, not enough to 
put a lot of time into it. Uh, I can't even put a lot of time into like something like Mortal Kombat, which I love. Uh, but Samurai Shodown has just always been that cool thing that I admire from a distance. You know, like Ben was saying, rarely getting to play Samurai Shodown 2 as a kid. And I can totally relate to that because it's like old older kid in the neighborhood had a had a Neo Geo in Samurai Showdown could play it like once here or there. Like you go to an arcade and you play Samurai Showdown. So it was always like just out of reach, you know, just something I've always admired from a distance. Never committed. I mean, I think I think conceptually it has a really interesting place where it's it's not a combo heavy game. It's not a game where okay, you need to go and do this this stupid execution to, like... Like, not that there isn't any execution, it's just different, I think, than what a lot of people think about with regular fighting games. Um, you know, you hit somebody with, you know, a heavy attack, and you take out a huge chunk of their life, and it's sort of like this tense dance of, of back and forth, and so to, to see that come out, and I think even just playing it with the allies seeing that was was really really cool where it's like okay i don't think we need to explain like a bunch of crazy stuff uh it's just get in there and and hit people with with super beefy attacks and so i think it's relatively approachable in that way uh yeah this has group stream written all over it at least for me especially being able to jump around to all those different games i love just doing two hours with all the allies on a group stream and you have so many games to choose from that really should take you much longer than that where it's like are we done with this game all right let's move on to the next one um, here are the details. Seven games in this collection, free on Epic Games initially, which yeah. is interesting, I think. Uh, coming to PS4 after that for $40, free on Epic, which, again, I don't want people to just like, not a headline, I hate Epic, I'm not going to get anything for that. So obviously that that doesn't interest you, but I don't recall this happening often with them saying, here's how much it's going to cost on other things, but it's going to get that Epic timed exclusivity and be free. Um that's interesting. I don't have a specific example, but I feel like they've done it a couple of times. I mean, I'm used to getting my, my free games there on the Epic. It's what I like to do, even for stuff. I'm, saying, I'm never playing this, but it's just fun to get free stuff. Uh, but, um, yeah, I thought that, uh, that kind of stood out. Specifically, though, a lot of what people are talking about is uh, Samurai Showdown Perfect, which is included and is a rebalance of five special uh, and that a lot of people are excited that it's going to be in the collection. The biggest thing about it uh, that I could see is that there's a new story for every character, so there's a lot of stuff, uh, story content that's added. Uh, but Brandon Sheffield, a.k.a. at Necrosofty on Twitter, uh, reported how it made its way into the collection, and this is a fun story. So I will try to get through this as fast as I can. The game was made not too long after Five Special with a skeleton crew, but with the involvement of SSV director Takia. Perfect was done on request from Yuki Enterprise, who was managing development, while the team was already working on SS6. But nobody told SNK about it. SNK found out and got the game pulled from play within a couple of hours. The game was pulled from location tests so fast that the director Takia didn't even have the time to get to the site to watch people play it before it was pulled. <laughs> Fast forward to early 2009, and Brandon's interviewing Takia for the collection. He asks, do you remember uh, this version? Takia says yes and tells us the story. Brandon asks, any chance you still have the code? Takia looks at SNK. You're not supposed to keep stuff. Brandon pesters him for days, and eventually he comes back saying that there's no code, but he has a ROM. He can confirm it's the finished version. It's got the new title screen changed to Mizuki's background because Takia likes that character a lot. <laughs> Though there was a lot of fighting to get it there, and Brandon had a 48-hour window in which to do it, he managed to translate the story into English. The ROM was Japanese only, but since the data was largely the same as special, he was able to reuse the fonts. Not only do you get the story, you get it in English. It's playable online, something that would have never happened in 2005. Sadly, the designer who wrote all the new story after working on SS5, 5 Special, 5 Perfect, and 4 passed away in the intervening years and never got to see 5 Perfect get released. His name is Toru Sakurai, and the release of this game is dedicated to his honor. How cool is that story? I love that story. Wild. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so amazing. I mean, that's what you can, you know, uh, dive into, but I love that we've all been there in whether you're speaking through a translator or, you know, uh, from one dev to a publisher. But that moment where you ask a question and the person really wants to answer, but they got to like turn and <laughs> look behind them. Like, <laughs> I don't think I can. But this is such an interesting portion of that, that this guy has this game just cooped up in the attic, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's one thing, like, to discover those things. It's another thing, finally, to get it made. Um, 
I just wonder what prevents fun stories like this from happening that often. Was it his forethought to hold on to it or their willingness to release something like this to everybody? I don't know why you would be scared to. Why doesn't this happen more? I well, I mean, with the uh, in recent news, look at the Snyder Cut coming out. This kind of reminds me of that in a way with Batman. And just, you know, this this is becoming more and more of a thing where fans want something so much and the creator has a say in it and that kind of bond, that connection, like, just rises, you know, basically just changes the, the suits' minds, I guess. I don't know. Like, maybe we just have more say nowadays because of social media, because of the internet. You know, these fan campaigns? I think in a way, um, in, in this case specifically, it was a little bit more low risk, mm. right? They're not, you know, like if they had released the original, like in arcades, like that would have been a huge investment, but put that out there while they're already working on six. Whereas with this collection, it's it's basically like another thing to put in the box. It's adding more value to the collection. So it was really just about that tenacity to dig into it and say he's like hey do you know what we're talking about is this around can we put it in there and the you know the history of the confusion of its development is 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 history and like there's nobody there like you know holding a grudge about it for any, any weird reason i i have to hand it to snk because i feel like they're doing so many cool things and i i just feel like they're extremely active and I don't, I don't think all of those things are exactly what people want. Like the new Samurai Showdown is exclusive to the Epic Store. And I know it was like a, a prominent Stadia game as well. Um, but they have this and then they're also doing things like you can get right now on Twitch, you can get a handful of SNK games just free on Twitch. And then you've also got this story and so it's just, they're doing all of these things on top of, you know, reviving Samurai Showdown and working on a new King of Fighters. It just, it, it feels like there's consistently a lot of, of SNK news or they're doing something, you know, they're going off in some direction. And I just, I just think that's really neat. Yeah, they've released so many of those old games just on Switch and PlayStation Store and Marketplace. Yeah. It feels like... Feels like there's a new one like every couple weeks, that, and that's been going on for like what feels like years. Just always some SNK game. It's so cool. Just like shows up too. It's just like oh, here's yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. Okay. Yeah, I should look and see if there are any in, in this because like you know I get the uh, the Switch email every week where like they basically run down everything that's releasing. Oh, cool. And then I mean, again, kind of going back to that like feel good announcement thing, like. Terry in Smash and his implementation and the King of Fighters stage, like, that wasn't that long ago either. Mm. So it just, yeah, they, they, they seem to be doing newsworthy things con constantly, I would say. Are they trailblazers in the sense that you, do you think people are going to follow their lead and, and realize that there is value in this? Or is, is the, are they just their own company with their own catalog and they're going to do things their own way? I think, I think SNK is in a decidedly weird position where they are extremely beloved and they have properties that people have a lot of attachment to and you know especially in certain territories um like king of fighters is huge in other parts of the world but not so much um like in north america i they're just they're just really weird i, I just don't think there's any other company that is quite in the position that they're in and so i think what they're trying to do is leverage their properties the best that they can, but they just don't have the mainstream appeal or recognition that like NetherRealm or Capcom sure. has. And I think they understand that. I think to, to SNK's credit, I think they, they, they understand and are trying to do the best that they can. I like to imagine that there's some big publisher out there and there's one guy who's absolutely in love with this franchise that works at the company, and he keeps bringing it up to his like partners, like, "Hey, 
you know, this news happens. He's like, did you see that SNK thing that got announced? And it's like, no, Jim, we're not bringing back SSX. Shut up. And it's just like, I'm just <laughs> saying, they did the thing. And he's so in tune with just all of these different companies doing interesting things like this. These things like the, definitely need a champion, Jones. That is yeah. that is one. Well, I mean, it's the, the X factor. You like, need someone right. committed to it to make these things happen for sure. It, 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 case, case in point, not just obviously this collection <laughs> happening, but this one thing being added to the collection like it really took you know Sheffield and crew um, to not only you know bring it to light but to be involved in working on it translating it in two days you know um, Um, the the one last thing that I want to say and I I give credit to SNK for is you know King of Fighters 14 earlier this generation what people really knocked uh, against it and I think the, the bad perception that it had was just visually it looking you know not as impressive uh, as you would expect a current generation game to look, but like there was a pretty substantial evolution from King of Fighters 14 to Samurai Showdown, and I thought Samurai Showdown looked great and had a ton of personality and really captured the essence of it. And so now I'm curious to see with King of Fighters 15 coming out, what that's going to look like, um, and because because I think they keep you know obviously trying to improve, and I hope that maybe they'll reach a point with King of Fighters or Samurai Showdown or whatever it ends up being, where maybe they, I guess, latch on a little bit more tightly with a broader audience. Like, just maybe visually something will capture attention. Like, that was the interesting thing about Guilty Gear Xard is that 2D, 3D style, even if you'd never heard of Guilty Gear before, I think it was just, like, immediately captivating. And then that obviously informed, you know, Dragon Ball Fighters and how gorgeous that looked, and... I, I don't know. I, I think these, like, not super mainstream fighting game developers, it's really fascinating to kind of trace their evolution and how they're hanging in there and the different decisions that they're making. Anyone on this panel, anyone I'm speaking to right now, watch the Wholesome Games Direct. I did. Yeah! I, I didn't. a little I bit. Did. I'm in, like, Xenoblade Chronicles land, so I'm sorry. That makes it's sense. Not That's a- understandable. It's not a loaded question. It's not an attack. <laughs> uh, uh, because, uh, Ian, you will abstain from this, but I just I want to play, just, uh, not really a game, I just kind of want to d- uh, generally do a test. Uh, what this is, uh, this was a uh, f- almost a 40-minute video, uh, and I think the Direct is fascinating. The games that were included in this Direct are fascinating, but it is a, a Direct in the sense of very similar to what Kind of Funny does, where some of the games they talked about in detail, some of the stuff was just kind of included in a montage. But they talked about 55 total games. Uh, obviously, if you can imagine from the wholesomeness, this is a, a largely independent affair. Um, a lot of these games do not have release dates. A lot of stuff isn't coming out until 2021. A lot of these games have very simple premises and are not like super... Um, you know, big, chunky, massive RPGs or big, crazy action games. And two of them I bought on Steam immediately. <laughs> nice. A <laughs> Co- couple shadow drops, a couple, yeah. <laughs> uh, couple fun announcements, a couple uh, uh, patches of exclusive gameplay that they had. Skatebird but, uh, hype? But I yeah. feel bad. Well, that, I mean, you, we can jump straight to Skatebird because... For Red, the, got a shout out. Wasn't the demo a little wonky? The demo was extremely rough. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Not to like throw shade at Skateboard no. because yeah. that's, <laughs> that's a game, that's a game totally you want, valid. You want yeah. that game to, to work. You want that game to excel <laughs> yeah. because yeah. what a joyous, I mean, any animal on a, on a skateboard, let's do it. Yeah. Well, and it said 2021 for that, which mm-hmm. I, I thought mm-hmm. it was this year, but mm-hmm. maybe they pushed it back because of the demo. I don't know. Could be. We had some totally. Skateboard. Interesting, it was only in the montage at the end, but uh, that was included. Um, yeah, there were, there were some stuff in here that I recognized, but a lot of stuff that I didn't. And... Uh, it's almost up to, uh, obviously it premiered live on YouTube, but uh, the archive is almost up to 100k views. So I, I think it's, nice. it's oh, nice. it was something that I saw people talking about. A lot of people reached out to us. Apologies for people. We did not do reactions to this. There's just a lot of, you know, Ben's and Xenoblade land. There's just a lot we have to consider here. Um, but it's tough because I hear after every E3, people are like, that was fun. These games were exciting, but like, man, I saw so many heads explode this weekend. It'd be great if I could see something a little more wholesome. And it was interesting seeing a lot of people he's talking about this games, and then one game after another, you just go around town, you meet people, you give mm-hmm. them presents, you hang out. Yeah, yeah. These are the games that I think are good for everybody's mental space right now, a lot Animal Crossing. I think there definitely is an audience for this. But The Last of Us State of Play is going to perform a lot more, Ghost of Tsushima is going to perform a lot more. Uh, is that just to be expected? Is there something 
we can do? Do you see the industry maybe shifting to where if they do this next year, it'll get more? Where are we at with violence versus wholesomeness in this industry right now? Well, it's interesting because, I mean, Animal Crossing is one of the biggest games right now. And that mm -hmm. yeah. is just like wholesomeness incarnate. So You can wield an axe. You know. True. <laughs> and you can hit with a, with a net yeah. and make your villagers annoyed. There are uh, one, of, one of the games in here... <laughs> Uh, was it Snacko or something? Like, basically mm -hmm. just straight up looked like Animal Crossing. <laughs> um, not in a bad way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of oh, these yeah, have yeah. that vibe. Well, for sure. Uh, we were just we were just talking about fighting games, and you know, Mortal Kombat is is hugely successful. There are a lot of games that wish they could sell Mortal Kombat numbers, and that's that's not shade of Mortal Kombat. I think NetherRealm has done a lot of amazing stuff to earn that. But I, I also wonder, like, is there still a huge percentage of the audience that is that is in there for the violence that just wants to see the fatalities? Has that like faded off at all? Um, I don't know. Or is it, or is it just other things now? Is it just the the unlockables and the single player content and the attachment yeah. to the characters? Um, like, how how exciting are the fatalities now? I, I'd just be curious to gauge the audience. I think it's kind of the foot in the door, you know, like sure. it's, the, it's the thing that will first get you to look at it and be like, oh, well, that's kind of up my alley, which again, is what's fascinated to me, fascinating to me about this 37 minute 55 game direct, which uh, you really kind of can tell right away. It reminds me of PAX. I, PAX to me has always been like the Ikea of gaming where you just go by and you're like, yes, no, yes, no, yes. You can just clearly tell watching somebody play something for 30 seconds this is my jam. I, I you know, I want to get all over this. And I, they did a really good job at selling these games to their respective audiences, where I yeah. think just raw human beings, whether you're into games or not, will watch somebody throw, shove a spike through somebody's eyeball and be like, what's that? <laughs> yeah, I, and I don't think it has everything to do with violence. Like you were saying, Ian, Animal Crossing came out. It's just Animal Crossing has the backing of Nintendo. Right. You know, so these smaller indie games, obviously are just not going to compete with the juggernaut publishing of a Sony or a Microsoft. So I think this format is one of the absolute ways to go. I really loved how they did this. Just game, game, game. We always say that, you know, about after the fact with press conferences, like, hey, just show the games. Let the games do the talking. Um, and just the variety on display here was so cool. And, and you brought up a great point too, Brandon, about like, it's almost like shopping. You know, yeah, I'm watching this and it's like the games go by. Uh, okay, I wrote that one down. I wrote I wrote ones down that I was interested in as it went by. I wrote down like Button City or Aaron Boy or I saw Ooblets had a coming yeah. pretty soon a release date. So I just I love absolutely how they did this. Yeah, I, I thought like I would love your take really quick, Jones, about the very end with the tease of the game. Has that just become a required thing now for every single press conference where they have to have some like Marvel post game tease? Right. Because it just felt kind of out of nowhere, and I was like, why are we highlighting this specific one? If Nothing you against have that to game. ask, it, why are we highlighting this specific one? Yeah. Then it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> it should always be one. You're like, what? You know. And it, <laughs> it was a game called Hoa. It looks beautiful, um, yeah. but it felt to me kind of fit in with all of the um, all the other games that they were showing, and and they didn't yeah, really kind of get into what you were doing specifically in the game they just kind of talked about it in a general sense and it um, seemed like it should have been one that was that we'd heard of before, like ooblets yeah. or or spirit fairer or something right. like new footage from something like that maybe but i mean but, man spirit yeah. fairer spirit, spirit fairer fair looks spirit yeah cool. lots of lots of fun platforming lots of like the the wind waker feather stuff or sorry leaf stuff where you're like soaring around uh, also unpacking any unpacking hype <laughs> yeah Oh and my looks, goodness, I'm ready to make every space right? so tidy yeah, yeah. and neat. <laughs> what, a, what a crazy... It's like when we play Moving Out. It's like, this can't be fun. <laughs> I am so ready for there's unpacking. No it's I like wonder overcooked. if there's some like, kind of... What? I wonder if there's some kind of emotional undercurrent to unpacking, like... Oh, sure. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's just it's something about... It's like cleaning, right? When you're stressed, just like they, tidying up. You see objects. <laughs> it, you mean emotions. That's what you're saying. Yeah, That's yeah. basically what you're doing. <laughs> Um, uh, so it's it, what was fascinating too about wholesome. I, I keep saying fascinating. Wholesome direct is in and of itself extremely wholesome because there wasn't a lot of 
marketing done by them outside of just showcasing these games. Like I went to the website and it's just these games. They don't even have like an about us page on their website. And uh, it was hosted by Jenny Windham and Josh Boykin. They didn't even like get lower thirds. Like I had to look look up their website yeah, to find the spelling faces. of their names. It was very much just like, no, 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 we really want to focus on these games. The, there was also Steam curators and they just say, brightening your day with cute, friendly, compassionate, cozy video games. And so I just love this crew. Again, like I love the PC gaming show, but there's just, like all the comedy and the bits. And like, this is just so focused on these individual titles. I'm curious, Huber, based on something that you said, if you're like, I love how they did this. 55 games in 37 minutes, and then they said, hey, we'll see you in 2021. Would this have worked if they'd done, like, two of these? You know, and maybe separate out one, maybe one at the end of the summer? There's just so many games. Yeah. I wonder if it's just too much to absorb in your mind, or mm -hmm. if these games mm -hmm. are so different, just like you said. Like, we all kind of picked our five or six, and if that's enough. Is it too much? Yeah. It's tough. I think that's maybe a case-to-case, because... -case, yeah, I, I had my little notepad open and I was ready to write down the, the ones that looked cool to me, but still by the end of it, it was like so much was going by. At the same time, that being said, the lightning round at the end I thought was really cool because some of these games don't have a lot to show, but by showing just a little bit, it mm. gets the name out there, uh, it gets the, the project in people's minds. So yeah, I think I, I think that this was the right call to bundle as many as they could, for a lot of reasons. I think if you don't have any like mega bombs to drop, you know, like mic drop release or brand new news about some huge title, um, I definitely think like packaging a whole bunch of underdogs together is a super cool thing to do, and. A lot of these games are being made by small teams, don't have release dates, don't have a lot of information yet, don't even have a lot of gameplay yet. So if you package them all together, it kind of elevates them all. Like, all the ships rise together, like you said before, Jones. So, I, yeah, I think it was a cool way to do it. That uh, kind of reminds me of uh, when big publishers like Microsoft or Sony highlight indie games in their conferences, and they just kind of do, like, a montage with music or something. And I'm always conflicted because a lot of times I look at it and then I immediately forget it because I don't yeah. know what the game is. It's, you just right. get like a brief flash of it. And it's tough because it's like, well, awesome. I'm glad you highlighted it. That's really, really cool. But it just doesn't stick with me. But I also feel like sometimes when you push those things out on their own and you make it like an indie direct, like people just inherently care less Right. Um, and so I, I don't know. I, I don't know what the best solution is. It, it uh, always highlights the, the just incredible importance of visual design, just the aesthetic sure. and feel and look of a game. Yeah. Because what you're talking about, the very first time, at least for me, I ever saw anything from Cuphead was Microsoft being like, here's all these games in Cuphead. And we were all like, what the what is hell that? is that? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just immediately it was like, what? how do you play this? Do you level up? How many characters are there? What, what? you know? And so it didn't matter, you know, what console that was going to be out for. And the answer to all of those questions was no. Is, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so it's tough. Like, again, just some of these... Some of these I liked the mechanics of, but I didn't really like the visual style. Some mm -hmm. of the stuff I thought, oh my goodness, you know, it's it's really up my alley, but I don't know if I'll have time for it. You know, it's it's interesting emotionally going through those things. And again, my my brain just got a little hot by the end. I was just like, whoa, 55. That's a lot of stuff. Right. But it also makes me wonder if a lot of these companies are finding out about each other. Because these people are all over the world. And they did a really, there was a lot of fun people. One staff was roommates. They were like, hi, the three of us are making this video game. We're all roommates. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like they're, either, they're either loving each other or hating each other right now over the last couple months. But I wonder if through this video, they're all finding out about each other too. You know, and so you have some of these devs reaching out and being like, oh, oh I saw sure. your yeah, video yeah. and that thing is so cool. I see that happen in E3 sometimes. You have like mixers and stuff where like, it's fun to see two devs you like meet each other for the first time or overhear conversations that they have. That's um, one of the huge so. blows about not having E3 or GDC or PAX or any of these this year is that, yeah, n that couldn't happen as much. So I hope that that happened with this. Yeah. Like, I hope they reached out and talked to each other or had, like, Zoom calls with each other or something. I, I hope everyone involved in this just doesn't have expectations going in about how people will react. Because there's 55 games, and if you read headlines, and, like, everyone's like, oh, my God, Bird Alone looks so great. And you're like, oh. <laughs> like, right. yeah. We wanted to be that game. You just, you never know. I think it's just every time you're just like, ah, you know, there's so many games. It, 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 this is, in a lot of ways 
Bloodworth, this direct remind me of like our inbox. <laughs> it's just like sure. every day there's just so many games as a service things or cool mobile titles or VR experiences. And it's just like neat. I can esports stuff. You know, there's just so much stuff going on in this industry. Well, that's why I, I, I mean, just cool. looking at their their images on the site, you know, since I didn't get to finish the whole thing, like mm. I do feel like they've done a good job of you know, finding things that stand apart visually, mm -hmm. even though like a lot of them, you know, have like, you know, very warm color palettes and all of that. Like, I, I think that there's not a lot of these games that just look, look like, oh, okay, here's another like 16 bit style Metroidvania. You know, it's, there's a lot of different concepts in here. Like Chicory, and Chicory stood out so Chicory much. Chicory was crazy. What I love about it though is like, most of these events that you get are like, oh, the Indie Showcase or the Nintendo Direct, whatever, and the, this and that, the ID at Xbox, you know, and it's like, it's a brand, it's a company that's, that's, you know, tethering all these things together. This is tethered together by a feeling, which I haven't, yeah. I haven't yeah. seen outside of like game yeah. jams, yeah, like yeah. you don't see that. And I just think it's such a fun angle. <laughs> I love that. You're I really right. appreciated awesome. it. I, I feel bad sometimes too for like really cool indie games that or State of Play has done this a couple of times too that like get wedged in the, in a Nintendo Direct between two huge titles and it's just like that poor team, you know because you have people being like what is this get this out of here and like they have no control over like where they go or how they're included like it's great to be included in this it's great to have eyeballs on our stuff but like we don't want to bring a direct point total down or you know just general you know review sense. Uh, we've long been talking about just visuals. It's very colorful, direct. There's just a lot of really fun gameplay you can check out, obviously, if, via their website. If you go to Wholesome Games, I believe wholesomegames.com, uh, then you can, you know, go straight to all of these developers and stuff. Yeah. The worst possible way to learn about stuff in this direct is for me just to rattle off information about it, but I am going to do that right now. <laughs> um, uh, because I just want to, I just want to give credit to all of these things. I at least want to mention all these titles that are in there in case any of this is interesting to you. And I will do it kind of in the way that they did, focusing more on uh, um, uh, stuff that they focused on. Again, they did the, the the run through at the end, which I will do as quickly as humanly possible. Ooblets, easy access coming. Uh, sorry, easy access, early access <laughs> coming. We got to have a, we got to have a special. Now we have to get easy access. access. Easy Come access. On. Um, <laughs> Uh, coming to Epic and Xbox One. Spirit Fair, we got new characters, a gliding mechanic, saw a lot of collecting resources. Kind Words, which is out. Uh, that's yeah. another thing interesting, too, is that's some of these were the updates. That's one I bought. <laughs> yeah, that, that, I'm very curious to hear what you have to say about that. Where you just write letters to people, you just say yeah, nice things to people. That's cute. Uh, it's available now on Steam. They showed off a new room. Um, uh, Snacko uh, was mentioned, a cat farm simulator, 2D, 3D elements, uh, launched a Kickstarter. If you want to back that. A cat that. farm simulator, you say? A, 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 what is you're, it's not a ca farm that makes cats. It's a cat that is running a farm. You're a sorry. cat. Yeah, you are a e cat. Either one. Good. Yeah. But if you, <laughs> we'll get to that though. Very ben. different tone. If, if your ears perked up, I got the game for you coming okay. up. Uh, Button City, which is a, a bunch of diorama levels, and you're a bunch of kids trying to keep an arcade from being shut down. Aaron uh -huh. Boy, which is an adventure game with a little light combat. I think the most actual like attacking I saw in the direct, uh, where a theme that ran almost through all of these videos where they were like, you just go around, you help people, you do yeah. favors for people, you do run errands for people. Uh, Chicory, which uh, Huber mentioned, uh, A Colorful Tale, these were the roommates devs, and you're a 2D dog bringing color to a black and white world. The Spirit and the Mouse, a 3D puzzle platformer where you're a mouse just, again, helping people. Dude, it town. looks like Ratatouille. It Ratatouille, yeah. Ratatouille. <laughs> That if you could really wield good. electricity. Uh, um, <laughs> Sayri, the beginning. You're an alien fleeing a dead world, and you have to make new animal friends. Look very colorful. Lots of uh, kind of open world vibes almost. I thought you were like mm. a ghost. Yeah. Uh, Mondo Museum, which seems kind of like a mobile game. I've seen mobile games that are similar to this. Just a Sims-esque museum creator. Uh, goes into early access in, uh, this year. That bird Alone, good. a mobile game where you and a bird just make a garden. It was like, it was up and down, like, proportions, and I was like, is that, this is mobile, right? And I looked up, like, yep, just on iOS. Um, Figuring out what life so, is all about, they say. How jolly. Like, Little Witch in the Woods, which is an Amanda Troop joint, if I have ever seen one, where you, it's a pixel art life sim, where you're a witch's apprentice, just running around, gathering stuff, being adorable. Um, Toem, in all caps, T-O-E-M, a uh, black and white game where you take pictures and help locals, Paper Mario vibes, just kind of in hmm. the 2D presentation, but it has the camera, so you can actually get into that world and... Uh, look around. Winding Worlds, which is currently available on Apple Arcade, a 2D colorful puzzle game. Toko Toko, Hako and Friends, which launched on iOS Android that day. Um, mm. It is an AR game with Animal Crossing looking people. 
where you just you like you, there you just look at your creek outside your house and all the little animals are jumping around um <laughs> that's a game the, title right there there you go look at your when creek. the past was around from she and the light bearer dev point and click time travel game where Ooh. you're kind of going left and right through time literally and through the environment um and you uh there's like a dude who was like an owl person like awesome uh a space for the unbound which takes place in 1990s indonesia a pixel art adventure game with supernatural forces look very um kind of like mind bending book of travels a serene online multiplayer rpg wow was this on your yeah. list i wait Ian, this seemed like i wait listed that one yeah. i was like i was like this seems interesting it reminded me of an old tale of tales game um where you played as a deer, I think it was called Endless Forest. It was like an online, mm. just kind of chill, be a deer game. I think that's what it was called. Uh, yeah, they say <laughs> role play without the restraints of linear quests and plot lines. Yeah. Ian, be a deer and waitlist that game, will you? <laughs> um, uh, it, it, uh, I described it as Journey meets, meets Sword and Sorcery. Kind of yeah. gave me sword and sorcery vibes, just in its loneliness. Now, obviously, sword and sorcery is very pixel art, but uh, this is just like very tiny characters, very, very, very dark and kind of looked looked bleak, but really interesting and, yeah, and really interesting multiplayer interactions. Like a less depressing this war of mine, maybe, or a little I'm bit sure. of Disco Elysium in there. I noticed on the bottom of the screen, it have a lot of things where it's like you are sheltered from wind and rain or wind and weather mm. right now and stuff. So it's, there's survival elements, I guess. Uh, Garden Story, a pixel art action adventure where once again, you help a small town. Uh, one developer, one guy doing all of the stuff. Um, uh, I'm going to butcher this. Deepanur Nocturne? That's the other one I bought. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A short first person game about getting your girlfriend a gift. <laughs> You're just running nice. around in first person like, oh, I gotta get her a gift. Uh, it looks like a lot of crazy characters again. Lots of anthropomorphic uh, 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 wholesomeness going on in all these games. And a shadow dropped on Steam. You gotta have a shadow drop in there. Yeah. You gotta have the game at the end, Huber. You gotta have a shadow drop. You gotta have a Kickstarter mention. Yeah. Um, here you go, Ben. Are you ready? We 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 have, we've arrived. Calico, a community sim where you have to rebuild and repopulate a cat cafe. I and made yes, that. yes. <laughs> no. You can ride cats. <laughs> just one shot. Where she's it just looked like, pretty delightful. Cat bus riding around. What, yeah, that's called Calico. 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 Okay. The regular spelling: C A L I C O. Rainy season. Uh, first person kid stuck at home on a rainy day discovers Dude. weird stuff in his house. Yes, this is awesome. Yeah, that one just, looked nice. Slight Gone Home vibes, just yeah, kind of. Yeah. You're like a little kid. It was like Gone Home meets Costume Quest. <laughs> like kind of reminded me of Gone Home meets. Um, Fiddle Frame, though. You meant oh, like that yeah. ghost in the attic? Like I could see mm -hmm. it getting pretty. Not didn't look like a horror game at all, but I can imagine it getting like touching yeah. on death and stuff. Yeah. And Wayward Strand, where you're a caregiver in an airborne hospital, an airborne hospital. She yeah. said that. I'm like, did you? She does airborne, did she? And I look out the window, and it's like, yep, there goes, the, <laughs> there goes the <laughs> ocean. Uh, just going about your day, just walking. This looks they, cool too. They showed yeah, a short clip, cool. and she was just hanging out with an old lady. You know, the doctor came in, and they were talking. And all the all the passengers just follow their own schedule, do what they yeah. want. Seem cool. And Hoa at the end, which again, we just for a game right at the end. Even when the dev talked about it, just didn't really didn't get a ton of information. Um, and More then, expectations if you're post credits, right, Jones? And then a few familiar faces: Kiwi, Tracks of Thought, Melon Journey Two, Weaving Tides, A Fold Apart, Skatebird, Unpacking, Sylvan Meadows, Haven, Tracks. Their Sci-Fi Packs DLC, Frog Song, Later Daters, which is a bunch of old people dating service, Clousy, Creature Resort, Push and Pulley, and Blockland, Onsen Matcher, Old Friends, Dog Sanctuary, which is exactly what it sounds like, Critter Cove, Roots of Pacha, A Monster's Expedition, The Other Side, Battle Cakes, A Snake-Sized RPG, Alchemic Cutie, Pico, Ollie Pop, To the Rescue, Rolling Hills, Himig, Orange Island, and Miscellaneous. <laughs> that was Ollie Oop. Ollie Oop? Before the, before Ollie the Oop. corrections get us. What did I say? And, and it was Onsen Master, not Onsen Matcher. Oh, that was I, I think you just misspoke. That one, fast. right up Ben Moore's alley, too. It looks like you're managing, like, a hot spring, like a day spa. I don't know. It looked cool. Um, People Ollie are is directly appealing to my taste. a skateboarding dog who goes on an adventure to find his friend Reggie. So many dog adventures. So many cat That's adventures. That's Reggie. That's my pet snake. <laughs> friend of mine uh, lost a, uh, was on a game show, and he said Richie. And the guy was like, nope. And he's like, oh, come on. It was, you had to guess that, that snake, snake in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, wow. He's like, it's Reggie. And he was like, God damn. I'm like, I didn't know what the hell that name, name of that snake was. It's Reggie Jones, fake fan. Hey, so, Jones. Yeah. You think we could ever do an easy living? 
at a hot spring. <laughs> <laughs> That's the place. Some of these places just aren't worth the money, man, that we could go to. But can we you rent a hot spring? Usually you can go we, near no, can we, a hot can we, spring. Can we, can we like make our own hot spring like in your backyard? <laughs> well, I'll any just listener heat up of this a podcast spring and then hand it to you. Metal spring could potentially go to patreon.com slash easy allies. Make that a reality. Because who knows how good our st- how much our streams can improve after going into a hot spring. Um, so yeah, almost 100k views this special. I, I hope there's more. Will there be more? Uh, Wholesome Game Direct 2021. Will more people tune in? Can we franchise yes. this thing? Huber said yes. it. There we go. Every, sh- everybody. Yeah. Sh- it's ah, there'll be at least oh. at least another one. <laughs> at least a follow up. Well, they said we'll see in 2021. So and it, again, oh, it's yeah. the, the the vibes of these people that were around this going to their Twitter feed and everything. It just seems like we're doing this. <laughs> You know, like yeah. we're yeah. we're not doing this for the fame. We're not doing this for money. We are doing this uh, was, so everybody can check out this stuff. There was one funny thing. It wasn't bad, but it was just surprised me when they said, uh, "This is a wholesome direct exclusive." What you're seeing right now. Yeah, this gameplay. It's like wholesome direct exclusive. What? <laughs> I mean, like cool, <laughs> but it's like you're not a company, are you? Like, what is this? It was it was neat though. I imagine some of you aren't excited about this just based on what I've heard, the rumblings I've heard at Easy Allies. And it makes me sad because it's interesting that some of these things we hear about are exciting. Some of them are not. Silent Hill is coming to Dead by Daylight. Yeah, baby. Are you excited, Ian? I've never played Dead by Daylight to my recollection. And this, I have a few, I mean, I'm excited about this, but it's strange. Cheryl, uh, long story short, without getting into spoilers, the person, this person, never crosses paths with Pyramid Head, nor has this person ever been to that elementary school. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's also really interesting that they refer to her as Cheryl Mason as yeah. opposed to Heather Mason. Yeah, but, but yeah. I mean, but that canon-wise, that makes sense, but we can't no, talk it, about it does. Without spoiling anything. Right, but exactly, like, uh, exactly. It's complicated, but also <laughs> then Pyramid Head is just there. Because, like, uh, Harry Mason, Cheryl's dad, goes to Midwich Elementary School in Silent Hill 1. Uh, this Cheryl, not around yet at that point, can't get into it. But, um, yeah, it's just funny that they cherry picked these three things because uh, they kind of go together kind of super don't like pyramid head showing up is very just like uh he's the popular bad guy i mean it makes sense i'm not complaining i, I want to make that clear i think this is fun but it's just really when i when i saw the trailer i was like wait what <laughs> like, yeah. in i i feel like you had nailed the vibe that I have too. Or I, <laughs> I actually don't have anything against Dead by Daylight. Yeah, I actually yeah. think it's a really cool game. Yeah. And I, I like that they're getting a bunch of different horror properties together. But like, <laughs> <laughs> it's <just> weird. <laughs> it, it's just it's just like as somebody who is very attached to Silent Hill and has been very attached to Silent Hill for a super long time, and it's just kind of like a desert of news. You're just like ah. This isn't really what I want, and like Pyramid Head being here is is weird. Like they already kind of did this with Homecoming, where they just throw them in. Yeah, which and so, is very very fan servicey weird. Yeah, and it is, and it's like obviously Pyramid Head is the most recognizable monster, you know, prominently role in the movies as well. But it just sort of is like Konami, like. Yeah. This is it. This is what we want, man. Like, I, I think, I think people just not to throw shade against Dead by Daylight because I, I don't think Dead by Daylight is necessarily doing something wrong here. It's just, I, I think I'd feel way differently about this if there was like a new hype Silent Hill game that I knew about. Which, according to rumors, maybe that could be happening well, that, very soon. That's why I'm always an eternal optimist on things because I feel like this is. Aside from it being Konami, which makes it weird. But I feel like this is... Anytime things like this happen, it's bringing the franchise back. It's bringing yeah. it into the limelight. It's setting the tone for future announcements. Fuel for the and fire, yeah. That's, it's not always the case. Like, Onimusha Remastered came and went. Nothing really happened. 
uh, Konami has prob- no problem whatsoever shilling out their properties. In the so- most tasteless of ways, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but it, I, I still like to hold out hope that it is leading towards a greater Silent Hill something. And I can I can definitely see, like, Ben, you mentioned the movies, and, like, the movies included sort of a uh, female protagonist, kind of pyramid head vibes, the school vibe, mm. uh, and, like, I think what we're seeing here is a combination of just popular elements from Silent Hill on the whole just being thrown in the blender. Uh, and it's like, am I more jazzed about Cheryl than slash Heather than like if they just made it James and the hospital and Pyramid Head, which would make sense. Like, yeah, maybe like, I don't know, like running, running away from Pyramid Head as Cheryl is a fun, like remix. Like, sure. Why not? So, but yeah, it's definitely a very strange, strange combo but like huber said i'm i'm just excited that something official uh from silent hill is coming out that isn't a freaking pachinko machine or a terrible (laughs) broken uh arcade machine it's it's hard though because i think especially the first four silent hill games especially i don't know i what i like about silent hill is and chat mems don't forget and sh- about Shattered, Shattered Memories. Memories. I like Shattered Memories a lot. I know some oh, people yeah. don't like Shattered Memories, oh, but dude, I like Shattered like Memories a lot. Shat Shat Memories is third best, man. Shat I love Shattered Memories. Third Shat or fourth Memories. best. I, it's just weird when I, I think, as far as like horror video games go, Silent Hill kind of felt like it had something to say. Yeah. Or, or, yeah. or at least was trying, you know, from... Even if you don't like certain elements of the the story i just think like from a visual perspective from an aesthetic perspective there's there's something about silent hill that just has it feels like it has more thought put into it and again i think if there was a new game that was coming out that felt like it was delivering on that promise it would maybe make this crossover a little bit easier to swallow but this just kind of feels like they're picking surface level super recognizable yeah. elements and you're just like ah right I'm but in a sh- way I don't know. you know like yeah that's sort of what dead by daylight is anyways right right because you know you all of this stuff gets, just gets all jumbled up right like you have the monster you may not get the map right the people play you playing against may not pick her you know it's just you know, it, you people you're playing against may all pick her. You may be running around chasing four of her. You know, <laughs> it's like, well, on that, a good yeah, day, it, it's like on a good day. This announcement is celebrating this beloved horror franchise. You know, this is a game where that that's what it's all about: celebrating horror. But I feel like on a bad day, and like, there's a lot of bad days with Konami. <laughs> it's easy to see this. Just feeling like you were saying, Ben, surface level. On a on a bad day, it feels it like it's just kicking the can. <laughs> right. But I mean, blood, blood, blood basically said what I was gonna say too. Is like Dead by Daylight is basically like a fun remix game, where mm. it's like you your pyramid head at. I mean, I haven't played much of it, so I don't know all the locations. But like your pyramid head at a different horror movie location, chasing you know the guy from whatever, and it's like. That's what it's all about. So to me, this is like harmless. It's fun, um, and it, yeah, it's cool that that Silent Hill's just there yeah. And still, I, look, look, I'm not condemning anyone for for enjoying it or being excited about it or whatever. Like I, I, I think that's that's silly. Like if you yeah. think this looks cool and you just want to have fun and run around as Pyramid Head, that's awesome. I'm just coming. I'm just coming at it from the perspective of of somebody who is like who is very attached to Silent Hill. And it feeling a little weird. Well, and it's... Um, it's uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But, but like, I don't think you have to come at it from that perspective. No. Like I said, you can just be like, ha, you know, it's like that meme, like, ha ha, big men with sword go burr. Like, you can... <laughs> that, that's totally fine. Like, you don't have to treat it super seriously, but... I'm sure with any crossover thing, you're getting, like, different levels of, of fandom being invested in different ways, and... Like, depending on where you fall, you're probably going to have a different response to it. And who knows? Like, you might be a super huge Silent Hill fan and think this is awesome. And that's fine, too. Which is awesome. It's just, to me, it's like the fact that it's Pyramid Head, uh, because 
Pyramid Head did become so iconic and then that was kind of abused to use maybe a dramatic word by the Western versions of Silent Hill, like Homecoming and stuff, where he just kind of showed up for no reason. And it's like, nah, dude, he was he was serving a purpose in two. Like he meant something in two. He wasn't just a cool thing that you could like the nurses pop up later. It's like that was repressed sexual desire, like whatever. <laughs> like that was there for a reason, guys. Um, so yeah, Pyramid Head just showing up randomly to fight Cheryl is it's kind of like, all right, <laughs> more of the same. But yeah. Yeah, I've I always had... Oh, sorry, bud. Oh, sorry. Um, but no, I think the thing that, like, with me that stands out a little bit weird with this reveal is, like, I, I get the sense that they're they're going to double dip on this announcement because they they announced that this stuff is in the game, but they didn't tell you anything about how Pyramid Head plays differently because like every one of those uh. monsters has their own you know kind of thing you know there's like you know a trapper and and you know a guy that sends out electrical bursts and there's like all these different things and it's like okay well pyramid heads not going to just have a big sword like what are you actually going to do you know to play with you know like either like psychologically and in some way or yeah. or what you know some kind so. of flesh rip perhaps well, Andy's, like, pretty slow in-game. So, yeah, I mean, obviously yeah. they're going to have to tweak that. Like, also, like, is there going to be more than one? Uh, who knows? Because <laughs> there's more than one sometimes. I've always kept Silent Hills kind of at arm's length. I've never really been, like, obsessed with the series. I appreciate it because I do, you know, acknowledge it as some of the best horror that we've gotten in video games. But I'll tell you, I got a little upset because, like, I first approached this... Uh, just kind of like, you know, I'm seeing like RoboCop fighting Terminator and, and uh, Mortal Kombat. I'm like, yeah, you know, like this is anytime we get weird things popping up, Schwarzenegger's and Predator hunting grads, let's do it. You know, I might I might never check out that DLC ever, but I'm excited about these things. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting. I should probably watch this trailer. And the trailer starts and the trailer's not bad. It, it, I, I agree. It didn't really get into the details that Bloodworth was saying, but just thematically, like the music, and the sound effects and, you know, Cheryl's looking outside the door and the pyramid's head's showing up. And then like the paint starts curling and I'm just like, screw you, Konami. You know, like now I'm pissed. Yeah. <laughs> like, now, I'm actually, now I'm actually upset. And it's funny because sometimes we get like Joker coming to PUBG and it's just like the character models look terrible. The trailer's terrible. Like they, they just botch so many things. They don't know how to announce these things. And so it was odd me watching a trailer and it, the production values were too good because <laughs> it just like started to stir up all these emotions of like, how dare you? <laughs> what this, how dare what? you make it, something look this great or make us think at all about stuff that's not this? Well, absolutely. Um, and like the, the style of this <clears throat> is very much like uh, Silent Hill 3 and um, to some extent too, but like, uh, and the movie, but like P.T., and Silent Hills, you know, was a very different direction, which you could argue is, like, how the game would have to evolve to, to be relevant, you know, four or five years ago and, and hit you the same way that Silent Hills 1 and 2 did when they came out. But it was, yeah, Jones, you, you said it perfectly. It's like, it, I got the same feeling seeing this trailer as I got from the trailers for Resident Evil 2 Remake and 3 Remake where it's like, oh, my God, that's the feeling that's got the feeling of it and it doesn't seem too scary to play <laughs> yeah oh you're right can we get really hyped for a second hmm. so what if you know like some directors mess around with like tv and they do like a little documentary or like you know one episode of something what if kojima and del toro and them are actually doing silent hills now and it's just like a little smaller scale it's not like a massive 20 hour, 30 hour thing. It's K just like. Kojima is not a, a smaller little... scale individual. <laughs> but like, right. small doesn't mean like less. You know, it could be like right. so hyper detailed. Like PT, you know, was so much for how small it was. The I'm, first I'm person that gets a... the kill, you know, like Pyramid Head rips the head <laughs> off. It's Kojima. Um, yeah. I was, I was uh, watching this video that Alana Pierce did, and she was talking about like a, a Silent Hill rumor that she heard. Where it would like call you, call you. It would mess with you outside of the game, and you'd yeah. have to like sign a thing so it could <laughs> it would get like access to your information. It's and just with you in the real world. Oh my and god! And she said herself, and it's true. You know that sounds like 
a legal nightmare kind of, but, but the idea of it is fun there's to, a, to play a game, around with. There are a few games yeah. that have done that in the past, wow. so yeah. it's not unheard of. You like Castlevania, wow. don't you? Was yeah. it called Ma- the Majestic or something? <laughs> There was one I can't. The one I knew about was like a murder mystery, and they would like email you or call you, uh, with like clues and stuff. I don't remember what it was called. It ju- that that idea just seems like something that Kojima would foam at the mouth. With, oh my god! Like, Can you yeah. imagine playing PT, and then at the end of the demo, your okay. phone rings? Yeah. Right. Oh, like <laughs> when the like, phone in yeah, the game so rings. Majestic was EA in two thousand one. Okay. I mean, that's like some internal darkness stuff, too. Uh, be great if they had something like the Rockstar Social Club, but it was just to mess with you. <laughs> like, it didn't actually <laughs> track your achievements or get, like, guilds worked in it. Anyway. I think it's Majestic kind of is the think game I might stuff. have been thinking of. Bring, anyway. bring back Team Silent. <laughs> yeah. Please. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead and do that, please. Also this week, Street Fighter V, getting one more season of content. Five characters. Yay! Yay? Yay, Ben? Yay. Yay! Yeah! Why, yeah. why not yay? Why well, not yay? I, I don't know. I haven't yeah. seen their other seasons, so I'm just, you know, yay because we thought we were, there were going to be more, or the, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've been, I've been an up and down, I think the best way to describe my feelings on Street Fighter V are up and down, and I think depending on the day you talk to me, you'll get a very different opinion, but I actually thought, like, the last batch of characters were awesome, and, like, just like with Mortal Kombat, I, I always think it's fun. Like, I probably wouldn't have checked out Mortal Kombat 11 again if Spawn hadn't come out or Aftermath hadn't come out with, with these new characters. It's always fun having a reason to check back into a game, and sometimes things surprise you. Um, and that, that's awesome. Like, I'm, I'm, I think mentally I'm ready for Street Fighter VI and just, like, a clean slate, but still cool. Very curious to see what they pick for characters. That's there's a lot in there. That's why I was surprised about this because I was—I don't know—for for some reason I had the impression that five was sunsetting and they were get, gearing up for the next thing. Mm-hmm. But I guess not. <laughs> uh, Formula E, which cannot meet together to actually race, much like a lot of other racers and uh, other sports uh, teams mm-hmm. and games, uh, are playing R Factor Two, which is a, a, apparently a, a realistic racing sim. And one of the Formula E drivers, Daniel Apt, was fined for pretending to play. <laughs> he, d- he he didn't Whoa. actually what? compete. He had somebody else play for him. And then later, like in an apology video, he was like, I, I was going to do a whole thing where I was going to like tell everyone that that happened. He got third place. And he was going to be like, but then we were going to be like, whoa, isn't it crazy that he did? And it was going to do like a documentary type thing. I, j- I just didn't tell anybody about it. And they were just like, your points are gone. You're out of this. So get out of here, dude. Ten thousand dollars going to charity or something like that. Just, I, I think that's so funny. <laughs> it's wow. racer. It was like, I'm sure you were doing a social experiment, which is why you cheated. Um, Pac-Man Live Studio announced, which works through a Twitch channel. You yeah. just go to Twitch. You just go to I Twitch still don't channel how it works. and play Pac-Man. Uh, you can make levels. You can play levels people created. You can play the old classic game. You can spectate. You can crazy. Cool. <laughs> yeah, very cool. That um, is awesome. And not something that I've, I recall Twitch doing a lot. Obviously, Twitch does lots of, you know, Twitch plays Pokemon and, and whatnot. But but that, tied into that, Pac-Man's 40. Pac-Man's 40 years old. Yeah, That's Pac-Man. why. Yeah. Uh, Two games in my life ever. I will never back down from a challenge. Do Pac-Man hype right now from GoldenEye <laughs> and Pac-Man. Come at me. <laughs> All right. Well, I've done one of those already, so it's, there's only... <laughs> Only one thing left to do. <laughs> uh, a mobile game from Yoko Taro was announced. Uh, Sino Alice, uh, from, uh, and with, who also has the near composer Keiichi Okabe, with one of the greatest trailer names of all time, which I didn't write down. It's The Worst of All Stories or something. Is the something name of the something, like, something that. like that. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that's Alice in Wonderland and a couple other literary characters who have to try to kill each other to bring back their you know creators it's funny the, the worst like of all this stories. is the worst of all stories <laughs> yes. it's so. it's funny the ups and downs of game announcements when you're like new silent hill stuff yay in dead by daylight oh yeah new york Taro game yay <laughs> on mobile oh like it's just <laughs> oh boy i'm here for those mobile game announcements uh 
Footage surfaced thanks to Noclip and Arcane Studios of not only a Half-Life Ravenholm game, yeah, but a Steven Spielberg alien game called LMNO, where you were guiding an alien like cross country. Uh, that and, one's uh, super old school though. They, we yeah, I remember. That. That I, I will never forget that. Game. that. Just, yeah. just like SNK Perfect, man, or just SNK Perfect, just like Showdown Perfect. These things are just buried, and people have them. Do you think about all of the things that are out there that we just can't, they just won't let us watch? Shout out to Danny O'Dwyer and, and the crew at NoClip uh, for, yes. for making that happen. I, I recommend. I have not seen the whole thing. I've just seen like little bits and pieces of it. Um, Cthulhu's coming to smite. You know, it's always good when Cthulhu comes to town. Oh, great! When Cthulhu. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm ex- I can't wait for Dead by Daylight to get Cthulhu. That'll be a really. Oh good yeah, DLC. the great yeah. timer comes in, just tears it up. Yeah. One of uh, Brad and I's best friends since like middle school. Every single day, PlayStation Network, Smite. <laughs> Every day for years. I was really wow. into Smite for a hot minute. Yeah. Me too, actually. Yeah, we played awesome together. Game. Yeah. BlizzCon's officially canceled. Not a surprise, but that they made the official announcement. Uh, EA and the NFL have agreed to extend their partnership until 2025. Great. <laughs> as long as they meet like sales requirements, which oh, hello, EA. I mean, we just talked about. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said, uh, Ian, the NFL has agreed to... Uh, Ian. I was like, I don't care. Give me this up. Ian. <laughs> Ian, I'm groaning. You're making me look bad. Uh, a demo of the System Shock remake is now on GOG and Sick. Steam. That's what it was. I was um, trying to remember why I wanted to go to GOG and get something. <laughs> which there was we just another one about. that that came out. Like the, the There was a System Shock remake demo the same time as the Skateboard demo as well. They did When they were doing that... Um, that mm. thing that they did, I think, around the Game Awards. The kind of funny showcase? Was it the kind of funny sh- showcase or the Game Awards where they had a bunch of demos come out? Why am I struggling to remember this? Get out there and get your System Shock demos, everybody. Yeah, there you They're go. They're out there in the wild. Go get them. Uh, there was a Last of Us Part Two State of Play. That one was fun. It was neat. I enjoyed it. Uh, the Fast and the Furious Crossroads has been delayed to August 7th. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition will launch on August 27th. Over 50 million copies of The Witcher 3 have been sold. Whoa. Wow. You did it, blood. Good job. <laughs> you did it, blood. <laughs> you did it, blood. <laughs> you did it, blood. I'm Woo! proud of you, blood. No, not even a Skellige on that? We, okay, I'll move on. Uh, thank you, blood. Uh, Kate Blanchett will star as Lilith in Eli Roth's Borderlands movie. That dropped, like, today. That was I saw Whoa. IGN reported that this morning. Huh. You never know with those casting things there. You never know. That's three new pieces of information for me in that sentence. I didn't there know. Don't think that's going to be like yeah. who's directing it. <laughs> you think it'll be like uh, Planet Lots Terror, Ian? What? You think you think it'll be like Planet Terror? Oh, no, that's Robert Rodriguez, that's not Robert Eli Rodriguez. Roth. Yeah, yeah, Eli Roth. I mean, is Eli this thing going to be wishes. a hard R rating? Like, I mean, definitely it's going to be R because of all the swearing. Probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, Accord- yeah. And finally, according to Charles Randall on Twitter, the original Assassin's Creed added side quests five days before launch because the CEO's kid thought the game was boring. <laughs> Video games, everybody. <laughs> Video games. It's time for love and respect. Love and respect. Stephen Beaumont, hey allies, with the amazing success of the Switch and also the conversation surrounding the console's successor, a seed of worry has started to take hold in me. Could we see a repeat of the Wii U? Mm. Uh, the amount of people that talk about the Switch 2 make me worry if Nintendo will drop the ball again, making a successor that's not marketed as a completely new thing and the general public not understanding that new product is on the market. Love and respect, Stephen Beaumont. I think, And just in general, Nintendo getting cocky is also like a... Yeah. You know, the the rumors of like a some Switch Pro instead of a Switch Two seem more likely to me first maybe I don't know or I neither agree. probably neither at this point like why <laughs> why would they upset the Apple cart like I don't know I mean Ninten- Nintendo is gonna Nintendo and they're gonna run their own race and sometimes I think that will lead to amazing successes and miserable failures. So <laughs> I, I, I feel like the answer has kind of been the same for a long time, where I, it, it's hard to know exactly where they're going to go. Yeah, every other one is, is <laughs> going to be a winner. Um, well, what was interesting in uh, you know that uh, Game Daily article with Piscatella, he was talking about how like the Switch has successfully become like, the also console 
Like it's not really competing right. with PS4 and Xbox the way that those two are competing against each other. Like there's just like a lot of people that own a Switch in addition to whatever else they own. Um, but I'm still curious because like before the Switch was revealed, uh, there was a lot of talk with Nintendo talking about you know the next platform being more of a platform than just a singular console and like having a lot of different iterations like iPhones and stuff. And I haven't other you know other than the Switch Lite, like I haven't really seen anything that like speaks to that. And so I'm curious whether that's still the trajectory and you know it'll be sort of like what the Xbox is doing with backwards compatibility and the next thing just plays all the Switch games whether it's a pro or it's the next console or however they end up pitching it um or if we end up seeing that something that's a little bit you know more like a traditional console cycle but i mean i could remember when they put out the new 3ds and it didn't come with a power cable or whatever uh, right i could definitely see them doing maybe they would learn their lesson and do two different skews but like i could definitely see them putting out a switch plus that doesn't come with a dock or anything but you can dock it with your old dock uh i could definitely see them doing that <laughs> and you could buy it with a dock too if you never had one i guess but yeah i i guess my hope is like i love with the wii where they're like hey we're tr-. you know i like i like these things in different degrees but i like the spirit of what they go after where it's like we motion controls you know we're gonna give you a we're going to focus on a way of playing that you're probably not used to. The DS, two screens. We're going to focus on a way of playing that you're probably not used to. Um, I, I hope that continues. Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't think Nintendo is in the business of just making another console. I, I think they want to try to, like, tap untapped things and, and give people new, new ways of experiencing games. And I, I really admire that drive and I, I i hope that continues and it's it's interesting because like before the switch came out and we were theorizing that the switch would be something kind of like the switch turned out to be like we could imagine that that need because the the 3ds right. was getting a little long in the tooth and like they hadn't put out a new console so it's like well put those together it's perfect what's you know but like you saying that i'm like i'm racking my brain i can't even think of what the next new big nintendo thing could be you know, right. like we're not, and, and maybe that's because we're not there yet. We're we're still so in switch mode, and like yeah. like Bloodworth said, or Piscatella or whoever said, like the also console. I think that's perfect for Nintendo because it's like they make such perfect, beautiful stuff for their machine that is just so great, and it doesn't need to compete with Sony and Microsoft in those ways. It can just be its own thing, and I think that's perfect. So yeah, well, like Fit Adventure is still hard to get. I'm not, I'm not yeah, worried. Yeah, <laughs> the, the thing that's interesting about the Switch is, like, I feel like other developers benefit from the inherent sort of gimmick of the Switch, where it's like a selling point is you can play your game on the go. Like you, like you just putting your game on the Switch, where it's like like Fortnite coming to Switch. It's like, oh, I can just I can just play this like on my TV or in handheld mode. And I don't always think that's been true for gimmicks that Nintendo has done where it's like, oh, if we want to put this out on like PS4, P- uh, PlayStation console or an Xbox console and we got to make a Wii version, we have to completely change how it controls to come out on the Wii. And so I could see that being frustrating. And so whatever way that they move forward, I hope it feels like the way that it has with the Switch, where it's like you putting your game out there, you're not getting like a version that you don't maybe want to play. I missed some of that because my internet got a little weird. Mine did too, actually. But I heard I heard the beginning and the end of it. Ben, my internet's fine. I heard all of it, and I <laughs> okay. thank you for that comment. Cool. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Like I even lost my train of thought because I was like, "Wait, I don't hear Ben anymore." Like, what's happening? Oh, was it, I wonder if it's on my end, but it uh, seems yeah, like Brandon told me my connection was unstable. Okay. It told me so the it's same either, thing, which is weird. It's either our ISP around here or Zoom itself is being weird. I don't know. We this podcast is unstable other. right now. All right. Yeah. 
Let's collect ourselves, okay? Yeah. <laughs> collect Let's up. play a game. Oh. From Sean Dupree. My dearest allies, it has been a while, but I thought it prudent to bring back an old game. Pitch it or ditch it. In case you've forgotten, you are to play the role of a high-powered video game executive. Your most valuable asset, your time. I'm stuck in an elevator with you, and I'm going to give you some ideas. You can say, pitch it, or tell me more, or ditch it. I never want to hear that again. Or, if you're Brad, ship it. I know a lot of PS1 classics have been successfully remade recently, so I want to ride that gravy train. Here we go. You cannot change these. This is it. These are locked in. You can't be like, oh, that, but I would shit. Just pitch it or ditch it. Number one, Symphony of the Night, but in third person. Ditch it. <laughs> the look. Pitch it. Pitch the me Ian on Hank that. Look. I'll hear it. I'll hear it. In third Ian's person? frozen. I mean, it's in third person, but I, I think guess more like mean, Lament of Innocence. Yeah, they mean like that. Ah, pitch it. I'd say. Yeah. Cool borders, but with realistic physics. <laughs> pitch it. Ditch it. Pitch it. Yeah. It's like steep. Sure. Yeah, pitch it. <laughs> Twisted Metal Free to Play, where you pay for cars slash cosmetics. <laughs> ditch, ditch it. Ditch, oh, ditch, ditch it. it. I'm ditch all in it. on that, yeah, baby. Right. <laughs> yeah. Ditch that. I love you, Ian. Siphon filter split into three parts. Hey, any siphon why? filter, man. But sure. yeah, that's the thing. Like, why is it being split into <laughs> yeah. three parts? You gotta hear the ditch, pitch. The, uh, Are they making, like, a Final Fantasy VII remake joke there? Sounds like you want to know more, Ben. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, it. I want... Yeah. You can yeah. still say no to the pitch. Yeah. yeah, pitch it. Uh, Parappa the Rapper with paid DLC for extra songs. Ditch, ditch it. it. Pitch it. Ditch that, yeah. Pitch it. Wait, you're saying ditch? Ditch. That's like such normal DLC for a Parappa the Rapper game if it came out nowadays. Like, I think that you're adding the, more stuff. The sales have shown that no one but Kyle Bossman wanted a Parappa the Rapper. <laughs> no, no, no. I super <laughs> wanted Parappa the Rapper, but, like, really? You really Just need DLC. a tech? Uh, yeah, no, no, fuck <laughs> that. <laughs> like, just give me, just, just like Parappa the Rapper, give me a complete game that tells a story through music. Get out of just this elevator. Just do it. Get out of this elevator. Bushido Blade Royale. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Pitch that. Yes. Pitch it. Ship it. Ship it. Ship it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Flip it's the switch on that. It's a perfect crystalline idea. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, great. Metal Gear Solid and the Fox Engine. Yeah. Ship it. Ship it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Pitch it. Pitch it, yeah. Uh, Soul Reaver. No spin, just a solid remake of Soul Reaver. Fine if you want something modern about it. Sexy Vampires. Yeah, pitch it. Pitch it. Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to say, who's gonna say no to that? Nobody. Thanks, no, ain't nobody going to say no to that. Not I. That would be the one thing I'd pick on this, other than that Twisted Metal Free to Play, i got to admit. <laughs> only if it, the only way it could be better if it was mobile. Uh, thanks for playing. Stay healthy. Wash your hands. Um... I want some good vibes to wrap this up. Keanu La'a. I just wanted to write in and say the easy A has taught me the importance of a seven. <laughs> Previously, I used to go between 10 out of 10 games without a thought or care in the world. But I think playing games that are sevens and eights really helps you appreciate perspective and understand what makes tens what they are. You got to know the bad to appreciate the good. Love and respect, Keanu La'a. Love it. Love that comment. <laughs> I, I was with him until he said appreciate the play the bad. Yeah, Talking I thought he, about sevens, I'm I like, thought, wait, what? I thought Hubert did a little prickly at that. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the common the not misconception as good? that sevens are bad, <laughs> even though you guys the okay and that's assert okay? that they're not bad. I feel like a lot of sevens can still have some, like, bad jank. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. Janky, but otherwise great. You know, like, I gave, I gave Trials of, of Mana a, a 7.5, and it's like, this game is really fun to play through. I played through it twice. But, man, like... Those environment models are not good. Yeah. Yeah. Voice acting is not good. Like, <laughs> just period. Gotta dock you. <laughs> I love when somebody labels like bad voice acting in like a clip or uh, I love the shot logs from Blood. And I just like, I can't wait for this. There were some people you were like, is that Brad? And I'm like, I cannot wait to hear this guy. <laughs> <laughs> there was another character like 20 clips later. Is this guy Brad too? <laughs> Like, they're all Brad. Now, they're all now, Brad. I think I might have just sold a copy of uh, Trials of Man. <laughs> it was just funny like, because it was. If it Brad's was in like there those, twice, I got to play it. You know, I, was, I was like literally like having flashbacks to the three of us on the couch because it just sounded like something Brad would pull <laughs> when we come up across one of these random characters. <laughs> it's time for bets. Next week's bet Valorant launches on June 2nd. This time, next week, what will be the difference? 
between the Twitch viewers of Valorant and Counter-Strike Global Offensive. So you take those two games, with whoever's on top, whoever's on bottom, what is the difference? You subtract the largest from the smallest. What's that number? Ian Hank. 53K. All right. I bet. Oh, actually, I'm not going to show my bet. Ian knows what it is. Ben. Hmm, I think I may have done a bad bet, but <laughs> it's too There's late no now. such things. 10K. All right. All yeah, right. see, has a bad bet. I see? Michael, that response. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, because I know what Jones's is because he keeps showing yeah. the camera. <laughs> Michael so Hebert. You couldn't see him out on the paper. 64,218. I love those specific I I numbers, Hebert. Yeah, I love them. Bet. I love no, the I frame of I mind. I don't know. It's either, yeah. Um, again, I prefaced for the team beforehand. It was 10K yesterday and 49K today. So that number is going up and down. Bloodworth. I'm going with 26K. Okay. Okay. 26K. Strong. Okay. Strong bet. And I, I love that bet. Ben, I'm, I'm where you at. I'm at uh, 15. So, yeah. We've got, got the low. I'm with you. We've got the high. Yeah. But Blood's got a whole big middle ground there. Yeah. Strong Bloodworth bet. Go lock those in. <clears throat> okay. Last week's bet, Minecraft Dungeons launched on May 26th. I looked at the last 10 reviews on OpenCritic.com. How many times did I see the word block or blocks? I checked with the panel beforehand and out of curiosity inquired if we were to allow blocky into this bet, uh, to which everyone said no. So we're just Different going to do a block context. or blocks. Uh, I bet 13. Daniel Bloodworth bet 31, which I didn't realize there was the swappy swap. Whoa. We did swappy swap there, Blood. <laughs> Connection. We're in sync. Ian Hink bet 16. Ben Moore bet 16. And Bradley Ellis bet 10. The number of times I saw the word block or its plural blocks in the last 10 reviews. Four. <gasps> wow. Does that mean Four. the penguins take it? Four of those, five of those reviews didn't have it at all. I was wow. like, wow. Yeah. Uh, if you were to add, I'm sorry, yeah, five. If you were to I'm add, sick of this circular bias. <laughs> uh, ten of those had blocky, or sorry, ten blockies in there, which is uh, why I asked. That's why you wanted. That's why you wanted know. it. Oh, the wonder. That would have been one away from me. Would have been fifteen. Nah, bro. It was been, been fourteen. Been 14? Oh, and I bet poo. thirteen. Yeah. Poof. Sit down. <laughs> Sit down. You know, if you do that on the log ride at Knott's Berry Farm, if you wave your hands like this at one specific part, this recording says, Sit down! <laughs> Sit down! Really? Sit down! That's great. Yeah. I got told to sit down on Pirates of the Caribbean once, so I was very proud. <laughs> um, or calm down or something. Somebody was like, calm All right, down. you. It's like, whoa. Um, I've definitely been rowdier on Haunted Mansion before, that's for sure. But uh, Bradley Ellis took that one uh, with his uh, uh, his bet of 10 would be closest to 4, uh, the lowest. So shout out to Bradley Ellis. And uh, we don't have chairs, but we got blocks. Michael Huber is in that block. Um, I couldn't tell, you, you see, because uh, Jovial Penguins has not been on the board yet. Uh, no. Blood won that first bet. I won the second. Blood won that third. So I had to really think, how am I going to do this with uh, that other team winning a bet for a change? So uh, that's how we're going to do it. Uh, you stinker, Jones. Bring it, I, ain't I a stinker? Bringing those scores <laughs> to Jovial Penguins 1. Get in there, Huber. What the shit? Everyone choked. Sorry. I made a Sorry. noise. Ben's yeah, doing it. That was it. That was it, folks. That noise. was on me. Astonished Scorpions 3. <gasps> ah! Well done, we need to rally the jovial penguins. The yeah, the, I'm sorry. We For a split like, second, I was like, what? We gotta have a workshop <laughs> and figure it out. God. I still think we should just quote the penguin from Batman Returns every time. <laughs> Let me tell you about patreon.com slash easy allies. Patreon.com slash easy allies is where you would want to go to learn more about the allies, where you can also go to financially support the allies. If you heard uh, some of the hopefully fun segments that we've had in the show, Gaming Gladiators at the Top, Love and Respect, which we just did, where we take questions and concerns and games from our lovely community, all of that is at the $5 tier on Patreon.com slash Easy Allies. For $5, you also get this podcast two days early. You actually get it on the name of the podcast, Date. I bet people tune in, they see that YouTube video go up on uh, Sundays, and they're like, that was two days ago. You can you can find out all of these news, so we aren't just <laughs> talking a couple days late 
you know, about the NPDs. We're talking several days late about the NPDs. Got that little taste of the NPDs dropping right about the time I'm about to, po- you know, staying up all night cutting the podcast and then just about to hit that publish button and Piscatel's like, hey, hey. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and just for a buck, you can get a bunch of exclusive shows. That dollar might get you, might get you something else too coming up. Might be a good uh, time. Little, might be a good little, time in that, ju- in that June there. We're about to get into June. Yeah. Sweet, could you? Like you might. Third tease there. Might be a good time yeah. to get a little something. Hey, Bloodworth. <laughs> I noticed you're talking about Dead by Daylight. Is that because you've been playing it recently? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get too damn specific, Joe. I'm done. I'm done. They're gonna I'm figure sorry. it out. I'll talk it, but I will get specific about Patreon.com slash Easy Allies. <laughs> uh, and it, you know what? I just. We, you know what? I just put up uh, I put up love and respect, obviously, for this podcast. We got the showcase coming up next month. We just did the Q and A. There's just a lot of different you know ways to get involved in Easy Allies, and uh, I you know kudos to all of y'all for managing all that stuff. I think we do a good job of of really uh, maximizing the unique community that we can have on Patreon.com. So uh, uh, just go and check it out. And if you're like, hey, I don't have a job right now, I don't have money to give out to people, totally understand. Uh, but if you are interested in the Easy Allies as a group, it's a good place to uh, get the info about us. Um, people that are super invested in Easy Allies at the highest tier that we have available deserve a hearty shout out on this podcast. Uh, and we shall do so in this order. Remember, everybody, Ian going first. I'm going after Ian. Ben, you're going after me. Huber, you're going right on top of Ben. And Blood, you're very last. Shout out to Blue, Caleb Togi Crawford, L. Thanis, Greg the Dark Knight Kettering, and Jesse Blue. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> nice. I think we definitely got louder on the last two there. We don't have to, you don't have to lean super in. It's the only time you were on mic this entire episode. <laughs> Huber, like, the whole podcast. Yeah, Huber's like always this. like, hey, guys. Huber, so those, those, uh, those Huber syndrome thumbs, you're just getting, like, closer and closer <laughs> to the camera. <laughs> the beard. The beard. <laughs> the beard's getting longer, and he's getting closer. <laughs> It's intense. <laughs> so, Huber, at a reasonable distance. Yes. <laughs> right from here. both the mic and the camera. There we go. Yes. Please wrap um, up this podcast. Uh, you yes, did. You, uh, Brad, your buddy Brad won the bet there, but you get to, uh, in his little square, in his Hollywood square, uh, you get to promote any Easy Allies video you'd like to promote. You get the final word on anything you've disagreed with, want to reiterate, or just popped into your head. And you get to sign off with your trademark sign off. Uh, at Michael P. Huber. Uh, video. That's not. That's one. not one of the things I said. That was. <laughs> that was egregious. That was an oversight. <laughs> no. On your. No. We're it not was doing entirely. T- reflex. At the beginning of the show, we say yeah. everybody's Twitter handles. Okay. Jones We've been doing this for years, it. man. Jones got rid of it. It's a new era. Yeah. Dude. All right. Hey. It's you the attitude era. You got to give me one freebie. All right. You can't say. You can say whatever you want. That was that was your, uh, but I will unfortunately that have to say me. that that was your final word on something. That was <laughs> that was no way. That was and, my warning. I get, I get a warning. I get and, a warning. I get a yellow card shot. before a red Jones. And I am not putting up your lower third. I refuse. Yes, please, please. continue. Um, something I don't agree or disagree with is Silent Hill, dude. Come on, let's get this franchise back. Let's stay positive. I know it's so easy to focus on Konami because they are uh-huh. not the best, especially <laughs> lately. But hopefully we put that out there, we put the positive vibes, the good energy to bring Silent Hill back the way it deserves to be brought back. Here, yes. here. Cheers. And then, uh, video? Video. Are we allowed to... I don't think you said your Twitter handle, did you? <laughs> <laughs> the video where I'm not allowed to, I can't, I can't hype it up because you guys already hyped it up. Which one? The Pix- thing that, the thing that we're launching next week? The thing that's been teased like numerous <laughs> times. Well, just, hey, tell them it'll, watch, watch the group stream. Watch the group stream. Yes, watch the group stream For a on twitch.tv slash easy allies on Tuesday at 6 p.m. And we meet there every Tuesday, actually. But uh, this Tuesday... I'm playing Minecraft Dungeons. Woo! Yeah, that's nice. Why. That's why you want to tune in. Somebody's uh, playing with me, then... right? Somebody's got... We got a co- another code or it's something? It's just going to be pass. you. No, I'm, I'm going to ask for some more codes. Yeah, <laughs> if, we're, we're if, it's on, if we're playing on PC, it's on Game Pass. Um, Perfect. I got it. Wait. Oh, is it on Game Pass? It should be mm-hmm. on Game Pass all around then. Yeah. yeah. So. Huh. I mean, I, I'm going to get it on PC. Should check that out. Sorry, Huber. Sorry. One. No, and then uh, just final word, you know, tough times. So tell someone. You already had your final word. 
No, so, oh, right, sorry, I, I no, sign-off. Was... Trademark sign-off, I think. Sign, my sign-off is, uh, you know, tough times, so just tell the people that you care about that you love them. I'll tell you the power of anime. I don't think you said your Twitter handle, did you? The Easy Allies would like to thank our Patreon podcast producers. We apologize in advance for all the ally names we are about to misspell and mispronounce. Blue, Caleb Togi Crawford, L. Fannis, Greg the Dark Knight Kettering, Jesse Blue, Walker Hope, Nick, Mark Dalga, Will Schmuck, Jan Tyson, Bradley Spees, Dave Red, Richard G. Flowers, Paolo Costabel, Jake Musser, Jay Shee, Zachary Wingate, Sigma, Robert Stoffel, Thomas Wigginton Jr., Discarded Digit, Ali Cat, Ethan R.C., Mick Roper, Damnable Nook, Andrew Reif, Happy Gaming, Miguel Rivas, Valmar, Blue Water, Blue Sky, Daniel Portillo, Jose Gutierrez, Alex A.I., Rob Bob Will, Beaten Down Brian, Hayden Hargraves, Chum Nguyen, Matthew Pauling, G. Levin, David Wen, G. Ken, Gary James, The Banana Forklift Killer, Marcel Markov, Catherine Lai, Todd Yurkovic, Stephen Last, Candy Coated Thorns, Hitman 47, Kelvin Hartonto, Rack, DRD 7 of 14, Matthew Holcomb, Oni Black Mage, Joachim Morovuo, John Santoro, Niz Klojgaard, Jesper Lawson, Jordan Kirk, James Vitt, Sam Hendrick, Stephen Thomason, Robert Crouch, Luke Bennett, Andy Drew, Neuromood, John Burns, S Snake 24, Mango, Richard Johnston, Mark J. Betters II, Steve Fallon, Roy Sung, Adam Henry, Tim O'Keefe, Super 3D Cow, Ethereal Ether, Ryan Ponder, A Joker Fan, Brad Grenz, Accounts Payable, Jeffrey Ruchtenwald, Mikhail Aniel, Corey Jackson, Wavering Radiant, Ritz 1906, Noah Weinstein, V8 Dave, Christian Hundorf, Eric Gustafson, Paul Sway, Ulf himself, I Sun Chor, Christopher Santis, Strikeout NZ, Sandra and Richard Acero, David Boyarski, Faraz Rizvi, Pete Shoemaker, Reed Johnson, Manuel Thomas, Michelle Nub, Mikey Mizek Novak, Alex Monaco, Paul Bishop, Modren, Zinterax, Marco Hernandez, Daniel Wong, Zustick, V Kira Ray, Don Turner, Sebastian Urban, Eddie Reisner, Sebastian Trier, Adam Scherenbrock, Evan Eng, Raymond Chow, Azazel Valkyrie, Junior Motomura, Ivan Ponce, Tuttle, Bjarnar Haraldsvik, Egg Stravaganza, Joshua Vanswall, Stephen Walther, Tense George, Colin Hoyleman, Barry, Cyberboa, Forrest, Eric Maynard, Chase Caldwell, Remy Loisel, Rahiv Maharaj, Leon Keyes, Chris the Pianist, Rerun, Ian Anderson, Philip Higdon, Furious Action Gamer, Nycrypt, Jai Aldiar, Robert I, Ivan Skogheim, C.S. Lewis, Ahmed Al Rashed, Bonnie and Jason Connor, Jock, Travis Miosi, Mike Calvi, Alex Glass, The Fatty Show, Neo Bear, Dan Pan 16, Wouter De Hayes, Malcolm Moshet, William Heaney, Not Jack, Mither Strongbeard, Jana, Anthony Galvin, Ahab, Clay Roberts, Palkin Sturz and Sturz, Orogachino, Dakota Hayes, The Classiest Hobo, Misuki 211, Matt Karwaski, Liam Ahern, Jason Joint, Bunny Chen, David Kennedy, Materia Addict, Arthur Henrique Chenaglia, Culinary Stud, Nuno Amaral, Magnus Rasmussen, Joel Olson, Edison S. Prada Jr., Tim Mann, Sean Rowe, Haley Hill, Crediar, Mauricio Fuentes, Jesse Fish, Gabriel Aberg, Zahid Hosseini Karami, Luis Ibarra, Lee Young, Alexander Zirianov, Morpheus, Ryan Foster, Delisi, Sean Cornett, Linson Wu, General Piet, Zio VGM, Matthew Migler, Andrew Smith, Andrew Stoke, Brandon White, Christoph Fatui, A Pack of Puppies, Michael Clendenan, Wen Bo Shan, Hadi Ali, Aurelien Grenier, Trevor Thomas, Michael Kozachenko, Awesome Express, Adam Lindsay, Corey Landega, Pablo Rodriguez, Timo Yeager, Alec Church, Ibrahim Sozer, Febra Gundam, 
Mike Hook 1, Carl Williams, Gustav Strombohm, Volker Bach, Russell Bateman, Jason I, Rickard Enbaum, James Vest, Nefertiti Jenkins, Tyler Wallace, Joe Rutsky, Kyle Quintero, Jesse Vitelli, Jonathan and Amy Alconis, Quinn Riley, JC3, Jack Cullen, Paul Nolson, Isaac Swanson, Jameson Lapine, Max His Shame Terman, Jethrin, Bread Roll Art, Matt Ford, Joey Din, Splontot, Jordan Phillips, Ryan Wagner, Matthias Clare, Spencer Stevens, Jeffrey Murillo, Kevin Camposano, Trizak, Matt Ferguson, Jake in Japan, Sam Sorensen, Vincent Foliat, Michael Baloney, Michael Pliskin, Andy Marks, Tim Strothman, XWF Outlaw, Julius Garcia, Alex Lavanier, Gon Keff, Joel Short, Dimitri Zetas, Mazarim Tain, Ganzak009, Helen Y, Jamison Anderson, Daniel Fuchs, Travis Gakowski, Megadet, Bard91, Sneaky Gato, Blake Bonsack, W Crusher, Lion Crown19, Tom Masterman, Jojo Denko, ZK, Jose Carlos Madrigal, Mr. Anarchy, Thomas Blaze Fochero, Andreas Risberg, Anti Ataraxia, Dreams of Caffeine, Michael Besegli, Matthew Holmes, Alexander McEkern, Raymond Lee, Lars Berger, Marcel Giru 17 Frolic, Donley, Matthew Eden, Erdney, Kutenau, Cabbage 92, Megan McDonough, Rainier Dennis Bautista, Nathaniel Austin, Ricky Cass, Glenn Olson, Natavia Ross, Allison Burt, Ryan Anderson, Dear Dream Studios, Jesse Wilkison, Katie Garza, Dan Sebring, James Davey, Neil Bruce, Silent Consonant, Craig Happ, Travis Ng, Cody Westley, Calvin Lay, Cisco Ace Jackson Garcia, Matthew Kroll.